The novel in which the film is based, The Terrible Game, has nothing to do with gymnastics. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> gymnastics plus kata. Jim kata. Yes, thank you. Kata meaning fighting style. I'm, well, I'm glad that you let us know that. <laughs> Look, I'm trying. Oh boy, I don't know what we're doing here. This is what this is what we've decided to do. Well, it was different. <laughs> oh, it was different, all right. I'm Kevin. And I'm Rachel. She's so much more excited about this. <laughs> and this is Shelf Life, a podcast where brother and sister team go through all things pop culture from all different genres, be that movies, TV, games, books, video games, comics, wrestling, games, videos, movies. Anything under the pop culture sun, and we determine whether or not that subject at hand belongs on your shelf, both digital and physical. Do it in a long form manner for long ass podcasts. Yes. Yes. And we continue our volume three here today with a subject that is, uh, as Rachel said, different. Yes. Rachel, what? is up for contention to the shelf today. <laughs> the movie. Masterpiece. From... <laughs> the 1985 movie, Jim Cotta. Is it, is it 1985? Yeah. Yeah. The 1985 movie, martial arts action film, I'm sorry, Jim Cotta. There you go. Yes. A winner of Razzies and all sorts of stuff, Jim Kata. A cult classic. Yeah. A very small cult classic. Okay. I feel like people are going to have to. This is coming after we did 12 Angry Men. So now it's kind of like, okay, how did how did we get here? How are, how are we? Because Rachel, wh how would you describe Jim Kata? Um, flippy. Qu quiet. A <sighs> lot of movement and action, I suppose. What what happens in? Oh, this you movie? want you want an actual like yeah, summer? Okay, yeah. so a gymnast is recruited by the American government to uh -huh. fight in a in a game, in a deadly game, deadly game over in Parmistan, which is fake. I hope so that they can create a Star Wars. They call it Star Wars. A Star That's Wars. That's a real thing. Star Wars is okay. a real thing. A Star Wars base. Yeah. There. Yeah. That's right. It's, That's the premise. That's the premise. Yep. It's pretty succinct. I think you caught it. I okay. think you understand. Took me a while. So we are entering the world here. As you you know, if you're a longtime listener of Shelf, meaning the 20 episodes we have, if you're a listener of Shelf Life, if you're not, we do like to do a variety here. We will pick subjects in the volume that have a different variety of of genres a different variety of types of things because we like to move around we want to capture as much as different kinds of stuff as we can mm -hmm. this is really our first b movie like true honest to god b movie yeah i think so like a cult following type of thing where it's only lasted in the zeitgeist because it is, some people believe, unintentionally funny enough to be like one of their favorite bad movies. Right. Now, we're not going to pretend that this is a good movie. This movie's awful. No, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> this movie is is absolutely terrible. Did I laugh at points? Yes. But the, that's not the question here at Shelf Life. We're what? not trying to find the absolute best peak of cinema yeah we're trying to find what belongs on your shelf right what is entertaining enough to come back to and own it and enjoy and, and enjoy watch it, again it and uh, just like have it a part of your your whole yes have it for posterity yeah pass it down make sure that it share becomes, it with others share it make sure that it becomes part of uh, your legacy if you will <laughs> and that's the question here. Does Jim Cotta deserve that because it is entertaining enough? Right. Because we are not going to claim that this is good. Right. 
<laughs> so Rachel, what was? Do you have any history with Jim Cotta? Do you know um, Jim Cotta from anything outside of? We watched it last night. I've never watched it. Mm-hmm. Besides last night, I've only ever heard others speak of it. Yes, that's it. That's that's it. literally it. So I mean, we well we've proclaimed ourselves fans of like Red Letter Media. They did a best of the worst episode. Yes. They featured Jim Cotta on it. I haven't watched that in a while. The second we're done Years. with this recording, I'm going to oh, go, go it. back. I know that that there have been po- other podcasts have covered Jim Cotta mm-hmm. for its unintentionally hilarious moments, as the reviews would say. Yeah. So I only know it through those sources from others reviewing or making fun of it. I think there's a riff tracks of it, but I have not listened to it. Right. The first time I heard the term Jim Cotta was Mystery Science Theater. Whenever anyone would do a ridiculous karate move, they would shout, Jim Cotta! <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant at the time, but obviously now... It, now I, you understand. Now I know, yes. Jim Cotta is directed by Robert Klaus, who I think did... Enter the Dragon, like a Bruce Lee movie. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's kind of weird that, you know, now in I mean, if you cut out half of this movie, it could have been better. If they didn't... Okay, so I tried doing some research on this. It's impossible to find anything to kind of go into the background of this. Mm -hmm. Or at least to find anything in particular that is like, how did this get made? How did they figure out that this was going to be a movie? Well... The thing, one thing is, is that it is based on a book. Which, when you told me that, I was like, yeah, right. Come and then on. it came up in the credits, so there. It did come up in the credits. <laughs> so did you find anything out about this book? So it's called The Terrible Game. Mm-hmm. And it was it was written in 1957 by Dan Tyler Moore. The thing is, is that it has nothing to do with gymnastics. So I don't know where they came up with the gymnastics part. Or if well, they just wanted to add that in as like a fun element. I, I think very clearly they came up with the gymnastics part when Kurt Thomas came aboard. Oh, sure. I think that has to be how this happened. That would make sense. So maybe we can give a little background on Kurt Thomas. Because I we think go. if you give a little background on Kurt Thomas, you figure out why this is Jim Cotta. So Kurt Thomas was a gymnast and he was an Olympic Olympic caliber gymnast. And looking at some of the stuff about him or like some of the articles about him, you find out that he was in the Olympics in 1976. He became the first American male gymnast to win a gold medal in the floor exercise at the 1978 World Championships. He earned six medals at the 1979 World Championships. The most medals ever won in a single world championships for gymnastics, only tied by Simone Biles. Uh, recently. Oh, interesting! Yeah, so wow. he's actually a like the 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 peer, the top. I mean, of that's the pretty impressive. Yeah, for Olympic gymnasts here, that's what you're getting out of Kurt Thomas. Sure, and he's not an actor; he's just a gymnast. Clearly, <laughs> for what he's asked to do, though, in this, oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it doesn't matter. Terrible, it's totally fine. No, no, no. But he doesn't act a lot. In no, it. he just has emotions. Do you, is that? Do you think he does? Sometimes. He has a screen presence. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, you're I mean, paying attention to him. Yeah, like he is there. Yeah. He's not, it's not like you're like uninterested in what he's doing. Sure. There's a couple times where I'm just like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's a little cringy. Well, sure. So he was supposed to compete in the 1980 Olympics, which were going to be held in Moscow. Rachel, do you know anything about the 1980 Olympics? I don't. Okay. So it was supposed to be in Moscow. Of course, this was the heat of the Cold War, oh, and okay. the United States decided to boycott those Olympics. Oh, so he did not get to compete in the 1980 Olympics. I mean, that does was, really suck for him. He was the favorite to win the gold medal. Jeez. And at the time, it was because the the Soviets invaded Afghanistan, so we boycotted. An amateur only was the okay. Olympics, right? Which is, I think, is way cooler. Having just yeah, it should just yeah. It should, I mean, I'm the, not the, I'm not gonna lie. I think that's really cool when like an to, amateur comes up and does it. Yeah, it's instead just like, of like how an do you become an amateur? Like what defines an amateur? I right. think is part of the problem too. And I mean, I guess if it's your job, if you're an athlete and it's your job, then you're not an amateur. Right. That's professional. <laughs> <laughs> like I would think. So he decided 
And I'm assuming one of these producers was like, well, you know what we could do? We can make a big deal out of this Craig Thomas fella. <laughs> he's, a, he's an athlete, he's an Olympian, and he can't do shit because Carter boycotted the games. I don't know why that's my producer voice. I like but... it, though. I, I, I can see the cigar. Yeah, the cigar-chomping producer. <laughs> that, that's like, we got this script sitting around for this stupid game thing. What if we just put it, this, uh, this gymnast in it? And then we can we can we can smoosh together gymnast and the Japanese kata, Jim Kata. Jim Kata. He elected not to compete in the 1984 Olympics. He actually did go back to try to compete later on in the 90s. Oh, okay. He right. didn't make the team because at oh. that point he was old and gymnast, as oh, you know, yeah, had a very short have... life. Mm-hmm. But he decided to be in Jim Cotta. So my guess is, even though I can't find a ton of information, somebody came to hit. He was looking for opportunities to make money because of the fact that the Olympics were canceled. Right. Decided that this could be an opportunity. And some producer was like, yeah, we're going to do Jim Cotta. So then they changed the script up right. to have Jim Cotta in it. I will say this, though, Rachel. I don't think that they really changed the script. I think they just put in set Oops. pieces to allow him to do gymnast shit. Agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, I see that. Yes. Because most of, and we'll talk about this, most of what happens in this movie does not need any gymnast techniques. No. <laughs> they're they're all, very, all very forced. Just no. 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 Yeah. <laughs> he had a um a gymnastic move named after him. Three of them. The Thomas Flair, a pommel horse move, and the Thomas Salto. His signature skill on the floor exercise. A tucked one point five backwards salto with one and a half twist into a rollout. A difficult and dangerous skill, even by today's standards. I, 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 we just, we just have to, we just have to. I think we just have to go. We just have to go. Okay. Okay. Let me just, I have a headache already. Okay. We will be right back after a word from our sponsor, our fake sponsor, or just a break. And when we come back, we will walk through Jim Kata. We're going to flip through Jim Kata. Oh, good. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Watch this move. See what years of concentration have done for me. See you do one thing, and you could be the best. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken, all they do is chicken. Tender, juicy, with that secret blend of 11 herbs and spices. And now, if you want to see how good it really is, watch this move. Mmm, wow! Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. And we're back. With 1985's Jim Cotta, the classic masterpiece that is and only could be done and considered for the shelf here on Shelf Life, Volume 3. The movie begins with the longest credits you've ever seen in your yes. goddamn life. With a bar. And it's the most boring thing ever. There's no style to it. No. It, there's just a bar. It's just a bar. I didn't know what Rachel was happening. Had, so Rachel did not know exactly what the movie was going to be about no i couldn't remember and i like coming in blind to these so she things. was like what is this why is there just this bar here yeah it was really weird and it was just there was nothing else happening for like a minute like a full minute a very nothing happened. boring score which was yeah. is just dun 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 that's all it is and the names are coming by eventually you get eventually. past these credits it takes a while to get past these credits. It does. It feels like they were stretching this movie quite a bit. Yeah. The movie's a little under an hour and a half. Like, it's almost exactly an hour and a half. But it feels like it should probably be, like, 70 minutes. Because there's yeah, a lot I would, of I would think 70 minutes to, to just an hour. <laughs> well, an hour, I don't think it would be considered a movie at that point. Yeah, well, uh, there's not a lot of dialogue, though. No, but you don't want a lot of dialogue. In no, this but in this, you kind of needed it. Yes, we'll discuss that. <laughs> we'll discuss why I say that. But this, yeah, I mean, it, there was a lot of scenes Rachel that was were very really confused. stressed. Stretched, I mean. Yes, a lot of stretchies. Once you get past the credits, 
mm-hmm. you find juxtaposing between two scenes. One is a man being chased in the woods by people on horseback dressed as ninjas. Yes. And I was getting Last Sacrifice vibes from oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Final Sacrifice. Oh, Final Sacrifice. Final Sacrifice. I'm sorry. Apologies. <laughs> and it appears that there's like a head guy on the right. horse. Like this bearded, coiffed haired, like he looks very 1980s strong man. Oh, absolutely. Type guy. Yes. Yeah. I think, and I kept saying I, th- I thought he was familiar. And and we find out that this guy is Zamir. Is that the I character's believe that's name? the name. Yeah, I looked him up. Richard Norton is playing Zamir. He looks familiar, and maybe I have seen him in other things. I think he might be like a character actor or something, because he looks familiar. He does look really familiar, and I don't know if he just has one of those faces, yeah. or if he really is like in other stuff. Yeah, so folks at home, let us know. And then it's cutting back and forth between that and a dude on high bar? I don't know a lot about... I'm not a gymnast, if you couldn't tell. But I think it's like high bar is what he's like twirling um, around on. So like it's it's supposed to, I guess, supposed to be symbolizing the differences going on here between the guy on the high bar and right. this guy being chased through the woods by ninjas. Yeah, I don't really know what we're supposed to be connecting. Yeah, I don't know what we're supposed to be With those two things together. They, I guess it's happening at the same okay, well, It's well, not even happening the, at the same time. Not really. Not I don't based think. on what we find out. Because I think what this is, I think what's going on, because spoiler alert, because who gives a shit? It's Jim Cotta. What I think is happening is the guy being chased is Kurt Thomas's dad. Right. Yes. But we don't know if this happened while he's on the high bar a year ago. Ten years ten ago. Years I don't know. We have no idea. No. And we don't know why this is happening. This is where you like, I think you could tell that they just forced the Kurt Thomas gymnast stuff into it because my guess is it would make more sense if it wasn't, you know, he wasn't a gymnast because his dad is apparently some sort of special agent. Yeah, he's like a special agent and then his kid is just a gymnast. Yeah, his dad, the guy being chased, gets on the rope from Temple of Doom. Yes, that crosses like a chasm. This chasm. And I think you're supposed to like, shimmy yourself right you're supposed to just like go over like climb over you you can either like put your legs over it or you can just climb with your arms i wouldn't do that because i don't think you're gonna have enough upper arm strength for it and like (laughs) you're gonna get fatigued but yes now i want everybody to understand that the sound mix in this movie is dreadful so half of the dialogue we could not understand for the life of a us. lot of mumbling a lot of the music was too loud or the st- or the background sound was too loud and the weirdest thing was this was one of the hardest movies for us to find to be able to watch i mean we could buy it it's true via, or rent it we we were just like we got to find this like, but we know somewhere. how you guys are you're gonna want to stream it somewhere yeah, so you may have to rent it it might it's gonna probably be a rented movie if you want to watch it or um you know anyway <laughs> Yeah. So the flag can be raised. It's all right. There is a. <laughs> it's Jim Cotta. So MGM should be ashamed of themselves. So they. Leo the lion is at the beginning of this, and I think yes. he was ashamed of himself. Yeah. He seemed a little upset. The dad is going across the chasm. Mm-hmm. Zamir and a bunch of ninjas are on the other side of the chasm. Right. And I think, because again, I could not tell what he was saying, he accuses Zamir of cheating. He says something about cheating. I just want to play the game. And then Zamir shoots him with an arrow and he falls into the castle. And he also says, don't believe the... uh, Then you believed the fool and then shoots him. I wrote it down because I thought it was a weird line. I was trying to understand it. So it was something about he wants to play the game. And Zamir said, then you believed the fool and then shoots him. Hmm. I wonder if he was talking about the king. I assume. Yeah. Maybe he's talking about the king. I kind of assume. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, yeah, the king lets you play the game. Right. But I'm not going to because he's, he's gonna... the fool. Yeah, he's a fool. And I'm I'm like rigging the game. Yeah. And maybe people don't realize he's been rigging the game and that's why no one's won in 900 years. That's what years. I'm assuming. Because somebody's always I mean, obviously he's the not game. there for 900 years, but right. you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Okay. We're 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 gonna give this move. We're gonna give. I overanalyze this too much. We, yes, yeah. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, they didn't think a goddamn thing about this movie. I don't think they did. They took the premise of the book and then flipped it. 
with a Rachel's gymnast. gonna go read that book now. I think I'm gonna. Maybe we'll do an episode on the terrible game. I'll do a blog post. <laughs> Shelflife at Wix. That's right. That's right. Whatever it go is. Go to our website. It's in, the, it's in the description. Just so, click the link. Kurt Thomas is playing John Cabot. So if I could just say Kurt Thomas, John Cabot's the same person. So Kurt Thomas is doing this routine. People celebrate the routine. This movie spends no time getting started. No. Because he comes off of the bar. Yes. There people are celebrating and immediately Well, this blonde girl wants to like go say hi to him and this guy is just like, "No." Yeah. And then I was this like That never comes back. <laughs> it never comes back. We don't know who the blonde girl is. And and then the CIA guy? Yes. Just like Kurt Thomas sees him and like knows that the guy wants to talk to him. Right. And like that's it. That's it. That's there's we no yeah, we we've started. Okay. So we know he's a gymnast and now uh he's been recruited. All right. So we're suddenly at this cabin. We're suddenly at a cabin. Yes. In the woods. In the woods. Yeah. I mean, maybe this is where he was gymnasting. I don't know. Or it is his cabin. Oh, maybe it's his cab. No, I don't think it's his cabin. Maybe it's his cabin. It could be his cabin because there's those guys outside, like, setting up. No, no, no. I think those guys, those guys came with the CIA man. No, 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 they came with, but I think they're setting up Yeah, they're setting up obstacle courses. Obstacle courses. So it could be Kurt's cabin. Uh-huh. And then they came to set up obstacle courses in his cabin. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is what okay. it is. Okay. No idea because they're not talking at this point. No. Th There's no talking in this movie. <laughs> well, and this <laughs> There's is no explanation. This is the part where you need. I think there's exposition a lot of exposition. Helps. <laughs> I think there is a lot of exposition, but I think that it's such a poorly, it's such a shit movie that you can't tell what the hell any of the exposition means. Yeah. This CIA man, I think, is telling Kurt. Thomas. So they say something about his dad and all this stuff and like about the game. So this is where we learn what what they're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the this is what, what which you, is the premise I gave you. Right. So it's a centralized location within like it's supposed to be I think like kind of like an Afghanistan kind of location wise Eastern European something. It's like in that area. Yeah. But it's called Parmistan. Parmistan. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not Parmesan. Like Parmesan. Parmistan. <laughs> the only way I could remember it, and I still didn't remember it. So the idea is that the United States wants to set up a Star Wars site in Parmistan. Yes. But the Zamir guy wants to force a coup against the king. Yes. And he's going to sell the satellite Star Wars stuff to the other side. Right. Yeah which would be the Russians. Right. So they need, I, I hope everyone's paying attention. <laughs> Did you got that? The CIA man says that there's a bunch of people from different agencies and countries mm -hmm. that are training their best men to win the game. Because if you win the game, which is this Parmistanian obstacle course. Yeah, it's pretty much just an obstacle course. You win your life and you get a favor from the king from the king okay and they want kurt thomas to win the favor because then he can ask for the star wars to be set up in parmesan yep all right there it is does that not seem a little overdone yeah you can't just have like cia man can't just be like look hey, look here mel brooks king of parmesan what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you a billion dollars and we're gonna set up the star wars satellite i mean you kind backyard. of think that there would be some sort of negotiation yeah. but parmesan is built on this game apparently, <laughs> apparently that they go no screw you you have to play our game like no 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 no. i'm not talking no to you negotiation until you play the game. no bullshitting you win the game then we talk that's exactly what I think it is. You have to prove that you have people who are good enough for me to work with you. So are we to believe that everyone that lives in Parmistan has won the game? No, I don't think everybody. So I think some people in Parmistan play the game. Okay, but natives do not have to. I don't think they have to because the there's game. no way. There's no way all of those people played that game and won. Because they say an outsider hasn't won the game in 900 years. 900? Which is... Way that's an too outrageous long. amount of time. Like, that's just too much. I to could see like 90 years, you know, maybe yeah. 100 in some years. Yeah. But 900? 900. Well, and I guess it's because they want Parmesan to be this like mythical, fantastical 
realm. Yeah, but and it, it kind of like stays in their steady on like what their beliefs and stuff are. Like yeah. they're not they're not growing like the rest of the world apparently Correct. as well. They're like stuck in the Middle Ages, right? Because it's because they've kept this game going forever. I guess. Yeah. CIA man shows a picture of the King of Parmistan. He looks like Mel Brooks. It's Mel Brooks. So it's if I call him Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks, it's Mel Brooks. He looks like Mel Brooks and maybe Gary Oldman combined, but he looks just like Mel Brooks. Yes. That guy is in a bunch of stuff, like little roles. So this I is probably his that. biggest role. So what they're planning to have Kurt Thomas do is train for the next two months, more than the Olympics, the CIA man says, to train for the game. Yes, because he's a gymnast, but he's not a survivalist, I guess. Yeah. So he has to like learn all of those skills from well not he's got he's got to learn how to do this like this yeah, it's survival like you said, it's, skills. it's ninja warrior he, yeah it's, it's ninja, ninja warrior, warrior. okay yeah. it is it is ninja warrior so do you think all those people that like train for ninja warrior are just trying to get into parmistan <gasps> is that the Maybe. ultimate goal oh is that what's happening is that what they win they win a favor if they win the game <gasps> Folks at home, let us Good know. know. Has anybody won American Ninja Warrior? And can I'm... be like, yes, you have to. Or are they not allowed to? Is there like an NDA? Mm. They're not allowed to tell. Yeah, that's possible. Maybe I'm... we should start training for it, Rachel. It'd be kind of fun. And see if we can get that favor <laughs> from the King of Parmistan. <laughs> that's like that's a nice thing in the in your back pocket to have. That would be a nice thing in the back pocket. Have that like, favor, I got this favor from the King of Parmistan. We just hold on to that. For not a that while. it seems like they have any. Any natural resources, resources anything. <laughs> exports, or imports. All they have is this game that they just trick foreigners into this competing. This game in. and apparently an army, but that's not even the king's. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's like uh, Emotep and the Pharaoh. It's like, uh, you know, it he's is. got his own little. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice the unibrow on Kurt Thomas no, in this scene? I did not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was rocking a pretty nice unibrow. <laughs> Now, as he's got a mullet as well. As he's got a he's got a beefed out 1985 mullet. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's like cleaned up at least, so it's not just like a messy. It's a mullet. 1985 mullet. It's true. It's a Jerry Seinfeld mullet. Yeah. Yeah. It's that style. It is. It's the style of the time. I hope we never go back to that stuff. We have been. That is a very. It's actually very popular in some places. I, you know, we've had a few interns with like mustaches and stuff, and I'm like, stop it. You look ridiculous. <laughs> With just mustaches? Just mustaches. That's difficult to pull off because you tend to look kind of skeevy. Yeah, and they did. Okay. They did. Yeah. Looked like I don't a... know. So anyway, <laughs> his father tried to win the game, but they actually have an insider because his dad didn't have enough information about what the game was. But they do. But they do. Because they have the princess of Parmistan who got out here. Okay. I do not know. Did she, did she have to, like, escape? Do you think she won Jim Cotta, the you, game? The game? I guess I keep calling it Jim Cotta because, but that's not what it's called. It's they just are, the game. They seem to be implying that she's some sort of, like, ninja herself. Yes. So that's why I'm wondering. Maybe. They never, like, say that. She mm -hmm. never says that oh, she, she did. She, no. Mm -hmm. so, she barely speaks. It's hard to kind of say that if that's what they're going for. But that kind of is what she does. She's She's... She's very headstrong. She's very strong, like body as well, because like she can actually like fight. Yeah. So I don't. I think it's kind of implied that she's either trained or maybe has played the game. <laughs> right. Or at least has played the game on her own. Mm. Well, and I guess being the princess, of she would Parmesan, know everything. She should. But did she escape Parmesan? Or she must. Did have. she tell the king like I'm going on a diplomatic mission? She didn't take anybody with her. She is by herself. Yeah. Did she, so if the king was going to let her go, you know he would have been like, But they never bring that back Here's up. all these people. Because like, when they become back, she just got, she's just there. Just there. Did, did they know she's bringing in this American guy? I don't know. Does she do this all the time where she goes out and recruits people and comes back in? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe she's like a recruiter for the games. Maybe. She goes out and gets some like you think that that's, you think that's how they like get people for the games. They've got like scouts all around the world. I, that could be to bring in these people to play the game. Yeah, so they have like a sponsor from like a native sponsor, and they go out and mm. they get themselves like a, a person. I like this idea, and then they come back in yeah. to play the game. I brought in Thorg. Yes, sea champion Thorg. <laughs> I guess that would make some that sense. That would make a little bit more sense too. But that's not in the movie. No. So then so again, just a just headcanon that I come up with. So they uh, revealed here is that the princess is there to help now 
the CIA man says that she will be facilitating his training. Yes. Princess Rubali. Okay. Who is played by Techi Agbayani. Techi Agbayani. I'm sure I did not pronounce that exactly correct. So here's the thing. They bring in this actress, Techi Agbayani. All right. So now remember that we said that the king of Parmistan looks like Mel Brooks. Right. This is a clearly Filipino actress. Oh, yeah. Now, I think a lot of people that have reviewed this did not pick up on this line. And I swear this is in there, Rachel, because oh, you no, were like, I, I didn't I do hear this remember either. it. Okay. Yeah. They say that her mom is Indonesian. So I think that makes sense then why she's like a Filipino sure. actress. Like, all right, like, fine. Why not? It's, the, sure. it's that region you know, close enough for 1985. Somewhere in there, the genes could make sense, maybe. But what's the story there? I don't Where know. Where the king of Parmesan was allowed to... Is she illegitimate? Is she a? Uh, I don't think is she she's an illegitimate, illegitimate princess. But the Indonesian, she could have been a, she could have been a princess or a queen. That's true. She could have been like it could have been a diplomatic thing. It could have been a diplomatic thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. Because now remember, and this is later on, they say that the daughters have to be married off to the advisor. Head advisor. Yeah. But it doesn't say anything about the men. Right. Right. Yeah, so he could have. Been so he might have been selecting. the diplomatic part where they were like mm -hmm. combining cultures or something. Yeah, yeah. Trying to combine something with Indonesia. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Okay. We're just making this up as we go. Yes, none of this, none is, of this is in the movie. None of this is explained. <laughs> so the princess is an expert. She will train him. The first thing she does, she does this quite a bit in the movie. Yes. I think it's just the only thing she does for his training. <laughs> All she ever does is deceive him. Yes. Because he's immediately horny for her. Oh, absolutely. And she has rope in her hands. And he seems turned on by this. Yeah, and he's like, oh, I'm going to tie me up now. <laughs> she says nothing for she the says first 15 nothing. minutes of her screen time. So he puts his hands in these in the ropes. And then she just beats him up. Yeah, she ties him up to like the, the, the pillar and then hits him in the back. Yeah, like punches him in the gut. And walks away. Yeah. And CIA man says she's saying, don't trust anybody. Okay. Fair, I guess. <laughs> and that never really comes back either. No. There isn't any any time where he has to trust somebody and then they deceive him or like yeah, really. double cross him. Not really. Which I was kind of expecting because yeah. I kept going, maybe the CIA agent is like uh, Actually, sort of with Stork. The the guy at when they're in the Caspian Sea area that does betray oh, them. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay, so it does so it come does, back. It does, kind of. Oh, I guess it kind of does. That was a whole weird scene. So we get a very limited montage. There is no oh score. Oh my god, this montage. He's... Is it really a montage? No. There's no score. They're just showing little clips of him training. In Quote, unquote. Air quotes. He's chopping wood. He's chopping. Oh my god, this is the best part, though, is him chopping wood. He's chopping wood. While an Asian man sits on a log next to him, spouting stuff. philosophy. Yeah, stuff about hearing the, the axe fall in the wind. He has a falcon. He has a freaking falcon. For some reason, he just it's has a falcon. a beautiful falcon. falcon. I don't know why he's holding it, but he has one. He just has this falcon. It's beautiful. I don't very, understand Very great why. metaphor. <laughs> it's it's a, a, a metaphor. <laughs> Just has a falcon, and they're all wearing like sweatsuits, so it's like really funny that they're all wearing they, like sweatsuits. Because there's two guys training him, and yes. one is this very large black guy, yes, and one is the Asian guy that keeps With a falcon. giving philosophy, yes. And at some point, the black guy is like chasing him on the horse, which on this I, like very like beautiful horse. Sense. And I'm like, okay, well, it kind of makes sense because that's a part of you know the stuff. Why the does he doesn't climb the stairs sense. upside down? I don't know. I was expecting him to climb something on his hands. He's yeah. climb. He's climbing. A staircase on his We hands. almost see his whole package. Oh, it's straight in the screen. Yeah, it his is balls right there. are in your face. That bulge is zoomed in on. Just saying. There is no reason for any of this. No. But it was kind of like it starts off with him not being able to climb the stairs on his hands. Yeah. And then it ends with him being able to get all yeah, the way to the top. Climbs all the way to the like, top. Like, oh, that was like, oh, now your training is complete. But, but why? But why? <laughs> And they don't they don't move the camera. He just moves around him, and that's when you're like, "Oh God, we're gonna see 
Yep. We're going to see his balls. Straight in the camera. And the guy's just yelling at him from the top of the staircase. Yeah. yeah. With his falcon. With his falcon. <laughs> there is a little bit of montage music at this point. And this movie just does not take any time to get started. So all of this happens all in of the first happens. like five minutes of the movie. Yeah. And then, I guess because he can, one of his trainers... <laughs> Just goes blindfold and starts swinging yeah. these Grim Reaper handle scythes. So it wasn't quite nunchucks, but it was kind of the nunchuck like style scythe. with size on them. Yeah. Why does that happen? I don't know. I guess he's just like showing him what he could be up against. Yeah. And what he really I truly guess. has to be ready for. Because it's not like he learns how to do that. I think it was just because he knew how to do it. And it was just like, this will be fun. Let's do this. The princess not doing any training. No, she just keeps looking out the window. She's just looking him. out the window watching him. Yeah. And every time she come, he comes like toward her. She pulls a, like a random knife or weapon on him. Right. She tries to like, she gets the drop on him every time, like with a weapon of some sort. I think that's She seemed of... to be like a tools person. I really thought that was going to come back too. Nothing is very satisfying about this movie. It's just a very scattered movie. Stuff just kind of happens. Stuff happens. It feels like this movie was edited by a blind squirrel. Like yeah. just kind of pressing buttons and cutting the film. Willy Getting nilly. excited about different things and then just like yeah. putting it all together. It feels like this was put together by a four-year-old. This feels like a movie where a four-year-old was like, and then he climbs the stairs. Oh, it's a lot and of then and then. He, you know what? That's exactly has, what it is. He has weapons. And then the princess, hey, uh, uh, she beats him up. That's what it feels it's like. It's a lot of and then. And it's definitely like a, a kid is telling you a story or like doing a skit for you. I wrote a lot of and then. Okay. We have to talk about this next scene. Because it is bizarre that any of this happens. So he asks CIA man, why won't the... Or maybe he asks the one trainer, the black guy, like, why won't she talk to me? Yeah. Or something. They're like, oh, she'll warm up to you. Don't worry about it. Okay. So then time has passed, presumably. Some amount of time has passed. He walks into the room and the princess is sta like standing there. And he's like, good morning, princess. Blah, 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 blah. And she just stares at she him. She just stares, no talking. So he starts doing flips. Like, you know how you do the thing? Very unnecessary no, flips. Let's, let's explain a little bit without the flips for a second. He's doing the thing where he's just like, oh, this person won't talk to me. Fine, I'll do their voice for them. So and being would... like, oh, I'm doing great. Oh, how are you? And then like going back and forth. And okay. you would turn around like you're facing the same direction. Yeah. Yeah, you just kind of like bounce back and forth, pretending to be the other person. But instead of just bouncing back and forth, he does this crazy backflip where he like lifts his legs to his head and like backflips. It's a insane backflip. And there is the most insane sound effect. Did you sleep well? Like a log. That's the sound of the backflip. Apparently, he does this a few times. Yes, it's like too many times, but he does it a few times and she finds it so charming. He walks up to her and they just start making out. Yes. She does pull the knife she again. She pulls a knife on which him. Which I kind of liked they that kiss. like, "Ah ha ha, I tricked you again." That's what I thought it was going to be. But then, he says, "Sometimes you just have to take a chance." She throws the knife away and they resume making out. Yep. And I was like, "What the hell just happened?" They know nothing about each other. They just Well, yeah, out. they do. I mean, she's been watching him train. That's it. She hasn't spoken a word and to him. And he thinks that she's hot. She still has yet to say a word to him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she still has not does not have a line in this movie. Right. Okay, so later on they're making goo goo eyes at each other as the guy tells them the plan. <laughs> and they're like gonna go to the Caspian Sea and all of this shit. And he's like, John, didn't you uh did you hear me? And he repeats the repeats it back. I guess that's to show that he can He can multitask. Multitask. <laughs> as it's necessary. I can make eyes at the princess and listen to you at the same time, Mr. That's right. CIA man. Rachel, why are they using him instead of a CIA agent? I don't know. Okay. I don't have an answer for that. I really don't. I have that same question. I guess it's I guess it's because he's just so good at gymnastics that he can make his way I guess, through. Maybe maybe they really think that they need somebody flippy. <laughs> like that's what they need is somebody who can well, like <laughs> I mean later on we do find out that one somebody it was brought made in a wrestler. Perfectly. 
for gymnastics. Yes. Oh, yes. It's perfect for him. Yeah. But yeah, we do have somebody coming in a wrestler. We have somebody else who might, maybe they're just like a runner. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe we'll, get to, all, we'll get to those Maybe guys they're later. all different kinds of factors of, of the Olympics. Right. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so they decide what the plan is going to be. And then it cuts to this little mini scene. But I have to mention it because I, we both thought... We both thought that they were, that we were in the middle of a sex scene. Oh, yeah. It was like, whoa, because <laughs> they're making eyes at each other. And then suddenly it's because of the movement. It's, it's because, because of the way that she, she moves. <laughs> because it's just got the, a big T-shirt on. It's just the princess. She has this his T-shirt on, yes. presumably. And she's pushing down and on something. And she moves down right? a little She's bit. pushing down. You know what we're saying. All right, she's straddling something and she's and pushing like, down. I did not expect a sex scene in Gymkata. We were wrong. We were wrong. We were, she was just getting we a massage. We were being dirty. It clearly they did. But then it turned into a sex scene. They were clearly before or after having sex. I think both. Yes, possibly both. Because she's both. wearing his shirt, gave him a massage, and then they spun over and kissed some more, and then it moves on. Yeah, and then it moves on. So you know that they started having sex after. She still hasn't spoken. Never a word. She had a sex scene, but still hasn't said a word. It's driving me nuts. So now we are in this carabal on the Caspian Sea. It even comes up and tells you that's where you are. Which was like nice that they at least told us. I don't know what we're doing in this. I don't know. Area. Why did we go here first? I guess it's just to like Is get this in... just yeah a junction like the because next... they're going to go in through into Parmesan. I think Parmesan that was the idea through Carabal. I think that was the idea. Okay, so they're like going to smuggle themselves in. Mm -hmm. Question. Okay. Why are they doing this? I don't know. Okay. Because they have the princess. But why can't the princess just be like, "I'm back. I've brought someone for he wants to be in the I game." I agree. Why do they have to smuggle themselves back into the country? Which makes me think that she went out without but their knowledge. But he needs to sign up for the game. I don't think there is a sign up. I think I think part of the game. You don't think there's like a little registration. This Booth? No, this was my thought. I thought to get into the game, you have to smuggle yourself into the game. So you have to like so all force of those your, guys. That is a part of the way to get into the game is you have to like just get there. So that's that's the first that's like the first that is task. the first part. Okay, before like the games begin, but like that is the first task is to get into it. Okay. I, I could buy that because Mel Brooks at some point does say like you made your way into our little country or whatever. Yeah, so I think that's what it is. Yeah. Or they have to just find a way to get there. So maybe they could just walk to the front door so and no, say, hey, like, I'm here. There's no or, airport or roads or anything. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking maybe they could try that route, but if they can't get past the guards or they can't like, you know... Yeah. Nobody walk just walks in. No one door, just Mordor, walks into right? Parmesan. Exactly. One does not simply walk, walk into Parmesan. Exactly. Okay. Yes. You have to find the back doors. You have to, you know, go through the sewers. I don't know. I mean, this is it, the city. The the country is trying to be a little Lord of the Ringsy. I guess. Yeah, they kind of want to be a little bit mysterious and like they want people and that to was want the to be first there. time someone has compared lord of the rings to jim Cotta. honestly though it worked it, it could be a section of middle earth <laughs> i was gonna say mordor but that was well, mordor a is a part of middle earth that's right that's correct yeah. i don't know those these things so they're on this ferry boat and they meet the stork uh, is what right yeah kurt thomas calls him so he must be another like CIA operative that works in in this fake area. I don't know if he's a CIA operative. I think it's just somebody that they they trust with. on the other side. They yeah, partner like within that, this, that with this and within this country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's clearly like this like special agent type of guy. Yeah, he's ahead of some faction. Mm -hmm. Something. And Kurt Thomas is like, oh, I didn't expect all this like infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. Weird. Like, what are we talking about? All right. I guess it's supposed to get you used to the fact that Parmesan is just. For in stuck is it in back the 1300s? Aspen or something? Yeah. yeah. And Stork says boats and buses, compliments of the American taxpayer. And Kurt Thomas goes, figures. <laughs> <laughs> He's very upset that we're subsidizing Parmistan, I guess. Apparently. I How thought, dare we spend our money? I thought maybe Kurt Thomas included that because Jimmy Carter fucked him over on getting his gold medal. So you know now what? he's like in exile. Let's keep that in there. I like it. Yeah. yeah keep that in there. That fucking peanut prick. <laughs> Stole my goddamn medal. It was supposed to be my time to shine. I would be on Wheaties boxes. <laughs> they take him back to this thing. 
I don't know where they're at here. I don't know. They some weird like, like salt mine or something. Yeah. They're like mining something. They are mining, aren't they? Because there's like a big rock wall. Yeah. And they're like pickaxes and shit. Yeah. So it's like a, a factory slash mine. And they're getting, he's getting these custom weapons, which he never uses. Yeah. Do, I don't know if tools are allowed I because don't think so nobody either. uses tools. So why is, why are they showing him these? I don't know. Because like, I thought that he was going to have like the axe at some point. I was kind of excited that for that little, like, little thing, there was this little thing that you could press a button and stuff just zips out of it. I was like, yeah. ah, she's going to use that. No. And I don't think she does. None of these tools Ever are... come back. Uh, no satisfaction. So I was that. like, oh, okay. So they think he's like James Bond because they're giving him like these tools uh, and stuff. Yes. Okay. And then she finally speaks. She finally speaks. And, and I did says, not like, write down what she said. Something about nice tools. Wait. Oh, yeah. Because you said, is she talking about. Yeah. Rachel had a riff in the movie because she said, is she talking about Kurt Thomas or the. Oh, yeah. I said she must. She really likes tools, yeah. including Kurt. Including <laughs> Kurt Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> but um not myself hey, 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 hey only i made out <laughs> so then they're walking through a marketplace i guess they're gonna spend the night here before they make it to smuggle themselves into parmesan yeah so they're just kind of like hanging out so they're going through this marketplace and the princess is showing him like all these like different oh and they're being cute look at the fabrics and stuff yeah and like she likes all the artwork mm -hmm. the overlay of sound is a little jarring because you oh, can tell God. it doesn't fit it's but absolutely they're trying, terrible they're pumping in sounds of a market yeah they have like they put the cassette tape in for marketplace sounds and it's very very difficult to tell what's going on and it's too loud yes uh luckily there's no dialogue there's no dialogue so it doesn't matter so it doesn't that it's matter. loud at this point because they got a filipino actress who might speak some english and kurt thomas who is a gymnast and not an actor as your two top characters in the movie right <laughs> so they tend not to talk they just tend to <laughs> emote in a way they're emoting yeah i'll give you that this is going on for far too long this marketplace scene because all they keep doing is going up to different booths and she's she's being They're like, oh, look playing. at this. Oh, look yeah. at this. Like, it's weird that she's already, like, she's all of a sudden acting kind of, like, giggly and stuff. But I guess it's showing the light, the, the softer side to the princess. Yeah. Whatever. Do the people in the marketplace know that this is the Parmesan princess? Or are we to believe that this is a Jasmine situation and they can't tell it's her? So I kind of think it's both. I think some might not know, but mm. I do think some money she's does not, know. She's not, like, she doesn't have, like, a hood up or anything. No, she's, she's not, like, hiding. She's just walking down the street. Right, she's not trying to hide at all. So I think maybe somebody does know because uh -huh. of what happens later. Sure. But I think some of sure. some people just are like, I don't really care who you are. I just want you to buy my goods, you know? Yeah. There's just these businessmen with them, too, I yeah. guess, as bodyguards. I assume that they're CIA agents. Yeah. I assume that they're they're with the CIA man. They're part of his structure. Right. One of the vendors walks up to Kurt Thomas this and says, you are American? He goes, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, of course I am. And they, he just throws water or, so, or booze on him he or something. He throws something, yeah. something clear liquid <laughs> onto it, this man. And Kurt Thomas, being a hothead... Is about to like Apparently. go attack this guy, and they're like, "No, no, 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 no! You'll start a riot!" Right. Okay. This next Which, part. Which sure, you know, kind of like don't. Yeah, I guess so. Well, but because at the, the same time, uh... because he the guy explains to him that there is, and the timing of this is it's beautiful. Beautiful. This is actually one of my favorite parts. Okay, so he says there's a little anti-American sentiment running around, and as he nothing to worry about. Yeah, nothing. And as he finishes the sentence. <laughs> The, this like he gets spear, <laughs> he gets his, struck with this spear straight to the gut. Don't bother. It might stop a big riot. So much for care about nightlife. Well, there's just a little anti-American sentiment running around, but I think. <laughs> Perfect timing, ten out Perfect. of ten. Beautiful. Put it on the shelf. That was great. It was that wonderful. that little thing right there that line and that little scene that's it that's all i want and then i wrote oh shit an action scene because <laughs> yes! kurt runs down these guys and he's using gymnastics to confuse and beat up some no good nicks yes. in these like back alleys so yes. he's, he starts using gymkata yes mind you they never say gymkata in the movie they don't and i kind of wish they would make it into a thing where it was kind of like we're gonna mix your gymnastics to, yes with japanese fighting styles yes i feel like they never 
like that should have been a lot. should have been like a huge thing. Yeah, like yeah. With, with your gymnastics, we're going to teach you how to fight and you will be like an unstoppable force. force. That's like, that's why we chose you type yeah. of thing. No, but that's what he does. Yeah. But it's like, there's no music in this scene. So it's just a lot of. Yeah. So that happens for a while. He beats a up while. the guys. And then suddenly the marketplace is empty. Mm -hmm. It's like emptied out completely. The princess is gone. Mm -hmm. I thought for a second, maybe the, like, oh, is the princess. Does he think the princess. Did she like double cross him him and betray? And like, this was the, this was just to get their operatives killed. Which obviously is not part of it or anything like that. No. There was a, the other guy, because there were two businessmen with him. The other mm-hmm. guy is a, a dead in a chair bleeding. Yeah, he's just dripping he's blood. Like that, that lasted a while, too. He just stares at that guy yeah. for a long time. Like, we got it. We, we understand. Yeah. No, I couldn't tell if it was the special axe that the guy was showing him oh, was before. It? And maybe that oh, was supposed to be like a hint. Was that supposed or they only had so many props. I didn't think about that. That would be, that would have been a good like tell. Yeah, but I think they just only had so many pro- props. Yeah. So he goes back to the stork. The bad guy, I guess, I couldn't tell what this was. I couldn't tell if they were working for Zamir. I couldn't tell if... They recognized the princess, so they thought they could hold her for I ransom. I think it was that. It was just a, I think it was, was that. Just a random occurrence. Just a random occurrence within this country because they're like, we have the princess, we can get money. Okay. I think that's what it was because I think that's what the guy in the office said that she was being. That they're there is because th- they look like mobsters. This whole they next like sequence mobsters. could have just been like Scarface mobsters because like 1980s style mobsters is yeah. kind of what they look like. That's what they acted like the whole time. They've got a lot of cocaine. And not just the producers and the on set. <laughs> like, I think the characters are supposed to have, like, drug runners. Oh, yeah, they could be drug runners. Yeah, because clearly there was a lot of... Co- <sighs> okay, and then I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have the mobs just come through and they're going to steal the princess, and then you're going to go back and then you're going to fight, fight the guys and there's going to be no guns. But there's going to be a lot of guns and then the guns are going to come out and then you're going to run through the town and then you're going to go through the town and there's going to be a car flip and then we're going to flip the car over and then you're going to make it into Pakistan. And it took forever. Yeah, so everything that I just said is like the next 20 minutes of this movie. So long. Oh my God, it's so long. Okay, so. And he goes into a house and he he's trying to be sneaky, but there's this man just like walking towards. It's this whole thing. So Stork is like, you're not just going to go in there alone. And he knows where like this fortress is, the Stork does. Yes. So he just, he just walks in. He just walks in. <laughs> he looks so awkward, like walking down the street. Oh, he does. And. I guess they kind of trick him into going in. Do you think they tricked him into going in? Or did he just literally walk into the front doors? I think he literally just walked through the front doors because well, nobody mo- was watching The him. mobsters start chasing him. That's true. I think. And then a bar just happens to be between these two buildings. Perfectly placed bar. He's got chalk on his hands, as you pointed out, Rachel. I did. It was kind of hard not to notice the chalk on his hands. Which I mean, you kind of need as a as a gymnast. It would make sense. <laughs> but, but come on, in a movie like this, he would not have chalk in his pocket. Yeah, and then these guys are just coming up to him to get kicked in the face. Just don't go up there. Yeah, it just seems kind of silly because he's just flipping like he's doing his own routine, and he's just kicking him in the faces a, as they walk. A wonderful moment oh, no. though that I laughed at. <laughs> I laughed hysterically. Was <laughs> so he beats up these guys, and then. <laughs> He, he, he's like waiting for more to come yeah but then there's this dude on a bike that just happens to want to go down the alley and he just kicks, kicks him, him in the, in the face, face. <laughs> it feels like it should it feels like if it was like oh we're doing guerrilla style we're filming in the streets of yugoslavia oh crap you accidentally kicked a man in the face kurt thomas yes we better apologize to him you know what Let's keep it in the movie. Oh my <laughs> like, god! That's Wait, what you it think felt... it's like it was real? No, I don't think it was real. <laughs> but it did feel like that. But it feels like that because why would you have him do that? I don't know. <laughs> so he kicks a poor man in the face, says, "I'm sorry, you're gonna be okay," and, and then, then just runs leaves him. Away. It doesn't endear you to this character anymore. I mean, I never really was endeared to the character. <laughs> Anyway, that's wonderful. Okay, so then... So he gets the princess. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I skip everything? Let's just skip all this. He gets up to where the princess is sitting in an office. This is shelf life. They put it in the movie. We can't do all of these scenes that just never end. We discuss it regardless of the implications it has. Fine. We can skip all this. 
But what happens is the princess is talking to the head mobster guy, yes. I guess. He's like he's just got holding a, her in his he's office. He's got like a Tommy gun pointed at her. Mm-hmm. It's like a submachine gun. It's of really some silly. Kind. There's a guy with one eye that comes out. Kurt Thomas fights the guy with one eye. Throws him through the door. The guy just, he gets a fire extinguisher, Kurt Thomas does. And the guy oh, just yeah. tries to axe the fire extinguisher. Is, that blows up. Yeah. He takes out a guy with knives. I said at this point, how come no one has a gun? And of course, then they all have guns. Yes, they all just all of a sudden have guns. Very bad choreography. Like, you can tell if this was done at a faster pace, maybe it would work. With, like, some different angles and maybe some music. and. But it's just so slow. And then... Uh, oh, my God, this part the where mo- he takes the... the mo- okay, hold on. hold on, hold on. The mob <laughs> boss comes... The mob boss starts trying to shoot him. He shoots... Kurt Thomas like throws one of the guys in front of the in front of it and then another guy just shoots the mob boss yes so then the princess and him get out and then the longest most boring chase scene through the streets you've ever fucking seen in your life so I think this is an editor mistake now I'm I'm, I have no idea maybe they really wanted this I think they just made did multiple takes of them running through the streets being chased right and And said said, we'll pick the best ones but instead they picked kept all of it (laughs) Because it just goes on forever. You'd think, okay, two or three, maybe, yeah. tops. No, like eight. Yeah. They just are running, running through the running streets, through the running streets. through alleys, being shot at by cars, being shot at by mobsters, yes. dodging the, the bullets. A cop comes in at some point, and then the car flips, and it just goes on and on and on. It, it just goes on forever. This was the first part that the movie lost us. We, like, stopped We both got bored? Yeah. And literally stopped paying attention. And I went, oh my God, I stopped paying attention. Yeah, because it, it loses you here. Because it just, it goes on for fucking ever. Because you look down, you look back up, it's still doing the same thing. Eventually, the mobster car flips over for some reason. Yeah, it like goes up, it goes up on like a ramp Because of, like they go down boxes. like the wrong, because they like get them to go down like the wrong way. And then like a car, like, like they have to avoid the tires, a car accident yeah. and like the, or whatever. <laughs> So they they make it out of that, I guess. So whatever. Sure. Fine. I, and they I, go back to the factory mine. I don't think the factory mine. <laughs> they make it back to the Colonel Storks. Colonel Storks? I that's at some point they call him the Colonel. He calls him Colonel. You know, I like Colonel Storks. That's what we're gonna call him. Because he's not in this movie at much longer. He's listening to something. Yeah, because you think this is going to be something, and then it's nothing. Yeah, he's on, like, a radio? Yeah, which I guess... It's, it's, it's nothing, Yeah, as far as we know. So they're pounding on the door. Yes, they're just pounding. They're not, they're not saying, yelling, they're not saying a word. Us. They're not saying a code word or anything. They're just pounding on a door. And it makes sense, then, why Stork Colonel comes out with a gun pointed, <laughs> yes. ready to shoot and murder Kurt Thomas. Right, and we were both like, just tell him who you are, you idiots. You're right. <laughs> it's so goofy. The princess doesn't think they'll make it. And now Stork turned on them. Just out of nowhere, he points the gun at them. And he's like, yes, like, I have i don't know if... This was my plan, was to kidnap the princess yeah, and or... with the mobsters and... Okay, maybe this is what happened. Okay, I think I on. have an idea. I'm excited. Okay, so he Theory was talking time. to Zamir... Or Zamir's people. Ah. And he told, tells them, don't let Kurt Thomas and the princess get back into Parmistan. Interesting. Because he has like a chance of winning the game. Mm. And if we don't let him in, he can't be a part of the game. So like just delay him. And because they're doing this coup, they don't if they yeah, can get rid I'm of the princess. I'm gonna do the coup during the game. Yeah. Sure. Because the king doesn't even believe the princess, so... Which makes no sense, because everyone Why? knows this coup is happening, except for King Mel Brooks. Which, again, that kind of it kind of does like have a lot of parallels with like how Jafar and Jasmine and... I can't think of... What do they call him? They don't call him the, the king. The sultan? The sultan. So, like, it's, it, for some reason, I can see the parallels with Aladdin, with the sultan not believing Jasmine that Jafar is evil. Yeah. It's literally what's happening here. It's very Aladdin-esque. Yeah. The whole plot, yeah. So, I mean, like, that's what's happening. And then you brought in, you know, Aladdin, a.k.a. gymnast. Yeah, John Cabot. But that's so weird. So Stork Guy is holding a gun on them because he's like, you're not going to get to the games. And then immediately after this, a machine gun shoots the Stork dead out of nowhere. Right. And it turns he out... He comes out of the shadows. Yeah, and then CIA the guy just happens to coat. be in there. <laughs> in a 
trench coat goes, I knew this was going to happen. Like, yeah. all right, <laughs> why did you let this happen? And that's the end of that. That's the end of that. Because they still got to get to the games. Which apparently, I can't tell if the games happens all the time or if it's only a specific time of year. Yeah, well, we'll 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 talk about that. Okay. Okay. So they're on the trail to Parmesan now. They go through horseback, and then they're on rapids, and then they're on river rapids. I assume that this is because they wanted to film this, but they're like they both have like life jackets on. Oh, so like bright it makes me think orange they life jackets. Really did do this because of the fact that they had life. I'm pretty sure on. they did. <laughs> And it was probably only for, like, the 30 yards or whatever. Yeah. But still, like, you put Kurt That's Thomas kinda dangerous. in this river. Because <laughs> they don't have a guide or anything in the boat. It's just the two of them. Yeah. Even these shit B 80s B-movies were probably, like, it took some effort to make these. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have all these horses and stuff, too. Yeah, it's a, a lot. It's a fairly large... It's probably yeah, kind of an expensive over. production. A car flipped over. I feel like <laughs> they that's a had big a deal. car flip over. <laughs> I feel like that always happens in these things, though, too. Yeah, There's oh, always yeah. a car thing. Like, it, something it, explodes. Yeah. An 80s V movie, if you, you don't flip when, over a car, did you really make a movie? When you see a really junky-looking car, you know it's going to blow up. Mm -hmm. You know. You just know. <laughs> So the bad guy music starts. That's that da 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 Yes. Da 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 da. So you know something's gonna happen, and then we see the the ninjas, ninjas on, horseback. on horses, and they're sneaking up on them while they're like in the river. Yeah. Then they, they pull get off, off of the river. Sure. And Fine. Kurt Thomas is like, "Are these your people?" Yeah. She says yes. yes. And then they proceed to attack them. Yeah. Well, well, the one guy does come at them with a dagger. I and thought it, he was just going to stab I the boat. I thought he was going to stab the boat for Like, you some can't reason. leave Like, now again. you can't leave. Right. Yeah. But, but then Kurt attacks them. Yes. Which then makes them, like, knock him out. Yeah. So he surrounds them, or they surround him. Mm-hmm. She doesn't attack, like, she attack doesn't do with anything. them. She doesn't do she anything. She doesn't try to stop them. She doesn't She doesn't try fight. to explain to them she does anything. literally nothing and just watches. Yeah. He goes full Jim Cotta and starts fighting the ninjas. But he gets overpowered and they knock him out. Right. Now we're now we are in Parmistan. We're inside the palace or mansion. We're inside something. Building? Yeah. He wakes up in bed with saying, this weird woman. Rubali or whatever. Yeah, I don't know what he is that her name? That's the princess's name. Okay, so name, he's yeah. saying the princess's name. Very this scene parallels Back to the Future, but also nineteen eighty five perfectly. Perfectly, because this woman. I think so, yeah. It <laughs> What year is it? You're safe and sound here in Palmerston, circa 1342. 1342? I took off your underwear, Calvin. Oh my god. <laughs> this weird, like, in-house keeper? Yeah, I think she's like a, I think she's like a maid. He's like taking care of him? Yeah, and she has the, I've got the hots for him. Oh yeah, this is definitely like Robin... Robin Hood of yeah, um... it's back. It's just Back to the Future. Oh, I was thinking more Robin Hood. Well, sure. Because like she does do to that. tie it back in with Mel Brooks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Got to tie it back in. That's who that guy oh, looks oh, like. Oh, he does. The mirror looks like the sheriff of Ro Nottingham. He looks like the from sheriff of Nottingham. Men in tights. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Okay. <laughs> just because I thought of that. Okay, he does. He looks like the sheriff of he Nottingham. He looks like the sheriff of sheriff of Nottingham with a weird little braid. Yeah, he has a rat tail braid. It's, it's like at the top. Mm, it kind of curves down. Yeah, I assume it's kind of one of those like things where you get a braid because you're like a warrior. Yeah, that's what I assume it's supposed to be. And maybe he like won the game. Yeah. I don't know. No, I, sure. Yeah, m p potentially. Maybe that's how he became the head the advisor. Because it, yeah. it, it seems like the, the people of Parmesan base everything off of this off game. Off of this game. This game is like the shit for them they are so excited oh i guess she wouldn't have said you're be safe here in parmesan circuit because she has no tongue as zamir says oh that's right so she's an avox yeah so they believe in cutting out their tongues and Susan, making them Susan work Collins them. took a little took a little something from, from jim, jim Cotta. Maybe she really liked the terrible game maybe i mean she liked i don't know if i don't know if avoxes are in that 
I don't know what actually I from this movie all, is in the book. I think book. that all is stuff from Roman times, though, too. Oh, probably. Where and they I cut mean, off she, their tongues and make Hunger them become servants. That, so I'm, and surviving the game. Like, that's all from sure. Roman times. You know, you, you so build this, off all of this each stuff other just same. builds off of each other. Makes sense. It's just as funny that it's in Jim We could really, like, make some parallels here. We got Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Robin Hood. The Hunger Games. So War of the Rings. He says that his <laughs> he's Commander Commander Zamir, advisor to the Kal. And we know he's the guy looking to take over. Yes. So I can't tell if Kurt Thomas is supposed to be playing this like coy or not. Yeah, it feels like that's the idea, but then he becomes stupid. <laughs> and then I go, Oh, he wasn't playing along. He just didn't Did know. he forget? I guess he really wasn't paying attention. The CIA guy shows he a wasn't picture paying attention. of He Zemir was just doing goo-goo eyes. And is like, this guy wants to start a coup. It's very obvious. He was he was too distracted by the, the princess. And he asks Zamir, like, when are we going, like, when do I meet the Khan? The Khan is the king. Right. And he says the next day, like, you'll meet the Khan. He's going to walk all, you and the other competitors through the game. And then the next day you'll play the game. Because he says, like, the princess is with her father. Yes. So we meet, we meet Mel Brooks, King, King Mel Brooks, and he's like, I'm going to tell you the game he's dynamics. He's got like crazy eyes and a big bushy mustache, <laughs> he right? Looks Mind like, you. He looks like fucking Mel Brooks. <laughs> he really does. And he tells him the route and he's like, look, we're going to be, we're going to do this and we're going to walk around and we're going to do the games here. It's going to be a good time. It's going like, to be a fun time. Like that's literally how he acts. He like has... he's like a spoof. This guy is doing some kind of accent. He's doing something. He's got a model of Parmesan, which he's showing which them fun. the route of the game. Sure, fair. He, there's like a handful of others that are apparently going to do this with Kurt Thomas. I guess these are the other people that are trained either by part the other of the countries? Americans or other countries that yeah. want to set up or ask for a favor. Right. So like a handful of these guys. The king says that like it's not just it's endurance and strength. It's a test. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to do a Mel Brooks. I mean, at this point, it's just Mel Brooks. And the one guy asks them, well, how do we know? This is the dumbest and most hilarious part to me of the entire setup. <laughs> so he's like, well, how do we know which way to go? It's it's all well and good, but how are we going to know? Because he says if you miss an obstacle or you try to avoid an obstacle, you'll be killed immediately. Sure. One of the guys asks, how do we know where to go? And the con says, there will be guys on the path that will point you in the right direction. You get markers. So very literally. Literally guys. As we find out. Yes. There are guys. Used as like flag posts. Just with flags to tell you which direction to go. Yep. They're like shy guys holding one flag. They are to point I, you in the very direction. much like shy guys. Yes. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and we were like. I'm going to pull as many parallels as I can. Now why not this. just put a sign there? With why not put just a flag post with the flag pointing in the direction? It's literally this, a dude because they don't talk to you. And mind you, no one has won this in 900 years. So like, it's a pretty sweet gig. Oh I my bet, god, yeah, I would love to, to be, be the like post. the entrance to the crazy town because it seems like nobody ever gets to crazy town. You're right, and if they do, they're not getting out. So if you're a guy with signposts going to crazy town, you have a pretty sweet job because you never have to point. Yeah, you never. Have to you deal just with anybody. are stationed there. Yeah, it's pretty great. Now this is where we can talk about how often do they play this game, Rachel. Because I can't tell if they play this every day, once a week, once in a while, once yeah, a year. Is right. it a festival? Is it a quarterly festival? Is it a moon harvest festival? <laughs> How often does this take place? And and this is why I question it is because one, they say like we have to make it to the games, right? Which makes me think, okay, there's a set time. The game starts. We have to make it right. there in time. Cool. Fine. However... Then they have, because he goes and plays king, which I had never mentioned that line. Because so when he goes and plays king for his I people, I like that line. I actually, it's it so fine. silly. He puts his Russian hat on and he goes out there. Yes, he puts on a very Russian hat. All right, he Rasputin, like yes. fluffy hat. Yes, fluffy rat hat. Yeah. <laughs> Rasputin. I guess I said Rasputin. Rasputin. I liked it when you said Rasputin. <laughs> is that Russia? Is that Russian version of French fries with gravy on it? A Rasputin? <laughs> so he goes and plays King, and they have a game the day before the games. This is to show you what the games are, though. 
Like that's oh, the so only is, okay, reason. Okay, so is that part of it? So we have the games, which is the festival. It happens at some point at the start of the year, yeah. right? Oh, maybe they do this. It's like Bar- and, it's like Barabbas and Jesus. It's like, like let Jesus, me show if you. Jesus would have won the games over Barabbas, maybe. he would have been let go. Maybe. Okay. So they have these prisoners mm-hmm. who he says, "Okay, you're going to play the game. We're going to let you play the game." Yeah. And to to win your life, right? It, this is the day before the other games. Yeah. I kept thinking that the other the other members of the games had to like chase them down <laughs> as if they were the the shy guy ninjas. Yeah, and I think actually Zamir is just showing them. But he's just showing like, them the the the, the route. Yeah, because I think he's like, you know what? I'll I'll show them because we're gonna do the prisoner game today. Right. So we'll so show you what you're up against here. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's a annual tradition. And the day before the game, the foreigner game, they give them kind of a little bit of a sneak. They do like, hey, we're gonna do a prisoner game. So like, they pick the three prisoners yes, that, to do to, the game, mm-hmm. and if they make it through, then they w- win their f- freedom. And that's 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 a lot of the people who are are winning each year. Probably are like just if you the... win, it's somebody local because right. no foreigner has won in nine hundred years. Exactly. So no f- foreign. So do you prisoners. think that they? It's like a week long festival, and there's a game each day, Ooh. and it's something different. So like, it's. Prisoner Day, Foreigner Day, All Star Day. Oh, I like uh, it. Locals Day, and they just like do the, the game they, each they, day. They come back like the ones that come back that already won. Yeah, that could be interesting. I like that idea. Yeah. It's like a whole week long festival. It it's feels like that the Olympics. Way. Maybe it's like the Olympics. Oh, I think that's. You know what? I like that. Rachel put Rachel's Ed like end the episode on the shelf. Cut it. We're done. <laughs> But I mean, like, the people do act like it is, like, a week-long festival. I guess so, because there is that feast later on. Yeah. yeah. There's, like, a carnival feast. It makes more sense for it to be that than just constantly a foreigner shows up and is like, I want to play the game. And, and they're, they're like, like okay. okay, we're playing the game tomorrow. Everybody's off work. Let's go. <laughs> like <laughs> These people don't work. <laughs> <laughs> they have something that they do within they, the yeah, country. They do something. Lock, they do something. Blacksmithing or something. Yeah. Farming. Farming. There's clearly not a lot of importing Shop and keepers. exporting in this in this parmesan there's they... that guy who puts pins in his face <laughs> that's a job that's a job no offense to any people out there that put pins in their face for a living it's like a carnival i was just yeah. making a joke <laughs> there's a lot of toothless grins in this yes. Dent- dentistry has not made its way to parmesan. no so there aren't any dentists and doctors i would say because they just put the crazy people in another town on their own <laughs> that's right those poor people like, that's kind of sad. <laughs> we'll get to that crazy town, because that's a completely <laughs> different movie. Apparently. <laughs> the rope is cut. When the I wrote this down, Rachel, I don't know what the fuck I meant. <laughs> there must have been something they said. When the rope is cut, the prisoners will start running. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he cuts the rope. So the king cuts the rope, or the con cuts the rope. Yeah. And they start running, and then he has to tell the the ninjas to chase them oh that's right the warriors they call them warriors the warriors to chase it's time yes okay or whatever because they're like attached to something and they're like trying to run they're like ready to run it's kind of like being on the the starting line for for a track meet i yeah you're right it does try to make it olympian Olympian olympianish yeah Zamir tells them we'll go meet him at the swamps. The prisoners start, and we see people chasing them, including the townspeople. I guess they were just kind of... I think they were just chasing them to the edge. Yeah, to the edge of, like, where they could see him. Okay. The the townspeople make a big deal about this, even though they cannot see anything. That's right. Yes. It's kind of like in Phantom Menace, when we were like, can they see half of this pod race? Are no. there monitors anywhere? Well, that's what I kind of... Yeah, it's like only, they only get to see it when it's... Yeah. When it's in a view, and then they kind of just have to find out what happens. And then they just wait. Yeah. For days. So then they just kind of party, I guess, while they're waiting. Yeah. That's it's the whole party. <laughs> gonna have There's going to be a killing party. and everything. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like chasing them through this cornfield. And at some point, the guy, one of the prisoners is climbing a rope to get to like that uh, Temple of Doom chasm. Right. And one of the ninjas shoots them. In the back. Off. Yes, and they fall. And Zamir says, kill him. And, and the, I thought he meant the prisoner, and the ninja, like, he's not dead. And so did the ninja, because he pulls the guy's head up. Mm-hmm. And instead of killing the guy, he has one of his warriors shoot the other ninja. Yes. Kurt Thomas, speaking for the audience, is Everybody. like, why did he do that? <laughs> and he says, it's because he broke the rules by not letting him get to the top. Yes, because he got to like the next. So he got to the next stage. So station. you have to let him do the stage. Bef- 
Oh, that's what we find out. Oh, and, and it's also impossible to tell because he's mumbling everything and the music is too loud and the sound mix is terrible. So right, so you're just kind of trying to infer. We're really inferring a lot of this. <laughs> this is where we find out if the warrior goes into the stage with the racer. Yes. They have to be like on the same level. Then he can kill him. Yes. But if they're just standing off to the side, they can't like They're not shoot allowed him. to just kill them. Yeah, right. which is why earlier Zamir broke the rules because he wasn't in the rope course with kurt's dad exactly he was just shooting him from afar right okay so like the one guy got killed by a spear because he wasn't fast mm -hmm. enough and the warrior caught up to him and killed him because they were both running together got it and then this guy just was standing at the bottom he wasn't climbing the rope if he was climbing the rope he could kill him okay and then later they climb the across the rope and another warrior starts climbing with him and says now you can kill him yeah. and then he shoots the guy this guy falls onto the rocks, and a beautiful Red dummy oh, falls beautiful. onto the rocks. It's always the best. I always love a good dummy pr fall. Just throw a rag doll. We off need to the, get back to that in movies. Is throwing dummies off cliffs? Because like now they just like CGI it, but you don't get that good like splat. Thump. Like you need that good like thump. Yeah, like hit. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Oh yeah. So all the prisoners end up dead. There's a feast to celebrate the game tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's all outdoors. And yeah, they're and all it must be cold you can because see they're their breath. So this is a stuff. it's a very fall mm -hmm. uh, it's a very fall celebration. Which is why we're coming out with this episode now. It's a very perfect. fall celebration. Very game. perfect. There's a jester, there's people doing freak show stuff, like we said. Yes. I said, what century are we supposed to be in? But I think That's that is the part point, of it, though. Yes. Because we find out with from the princess, the princess that the says, young kids, yeah. the younger generation in Parmesan, pa par Parmistan. She didn't even mean to do I that. Didn't mean to do this. In Parmistan, want to modernize and get to the same level as the rest of the world. Right. But like they none of nobody else does, and they want to keep the games because the games. I think they would probably get rid of. That's the what games? I couldn't figure out. Are the young people? But but that's... honestly, modernize the games and make it like Ninja Warrior style because. And, and none of this is in there either because the king is like beloved by all the people oh, that we can see. Totally beloved. The There's second he comes like... out, they're like, "Oh my god, yes!" Because the king! When, when she does tell us that, I thought there was going to be like protesting mm -hmm. of like younger people were going to be like protesting the game and calling it like. Which would be great stuff, to see. Which would give an element to why Zamir might be like promising these people, like I'm going to get rid of the game sure. with, by getting rid of the king, or the princess is being promised to to the when the princess becomes queen, she's going to get rid of the games or modernize. And the I'm going to stop it from and, happening. And Zamir's like getting support from the old townspeople by saying like, "No, we're going to keep the games. Like, right. I just need to marry." Her. None of that is in the movie. There's no night dynamic, <laughs> and it, uh, with any of that, yeah. So they're just eating in the street. They've got their tables and feasts set up. All yeah. of the everybody's partying, champions. Drinking. Would you call them champions? Or at I the table? guess they're the champions. Yeah, so sure. Because they're the, the Olympians it's over this here. Group of people. They all seem fairly American. I mean, there's, that's probably just an actor thing. They're yeah. probably not supposed. Well, to there's be. a guy of like Asian descent. Yes. who is wearing like all red. Right. There's a guy wearing like a pullover or a windbreaker or something. Yes. He looks ridiculous. The the pastel guy. Yeah, pastel windbreaker guy. Yeah. There's there's mop head. Is one yes, of them. the guy with the bowl cut. Yeah, bowl yeah, yeah, yeah. head bowl cut is one of them. They do not none of them look like they should be winning the game. No. Especially, I mean, Kurt's a smaller guy because he's a gymnast too. Sure. But at least he's got Jim Cotta. At least he's got Jim Cotta, and. I was kind of hoping that the other ones would have like some sort of specialty, specialty, something because... to stand out, so that we exactly have, yeah. Because we have Jim Cotta, and then we have this beastly man who walks out, I guess, into the courtyard that they're at, and everybody starts okay. chanting for him. So hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm before sorry. Before this, before before that guy comes out. Oh, the king we never, starts talking. I'm we sorry. never figured out what that what was going on there. <laughs> Zamir is shirtless under this robe. Oh yeah. He looks like an Adonis. Well, he's kind of wearing a vest. Yeah. It must be like some sort of traditional yeah, thing. Attire. But he looks like he can take out it's anybody cold, in the game. Sure. The king comes out and celebrates. Rachel, I wish I would have taken a picture of your face. Because I turned and looked at you, and you looked like Rich Evans trying to understand. <laughs> 
what was going on in one of these movies. You just had this like puzzled look on your face. You looked so confused. <laughs> oh my god. I thought that the king is wearing a wig of some kind. And he might be. He might be. Kurt asks the king about his father. Oh, yeah. And Mel Brooks says, your father was a superb competitor, <laughs> but he was not victorious. Just, do you think he even knew who he was talking about? I said, <laughs> I said, he probably says that about every competitor. Yeah, anybody who asks. He's just like, oh, God, he thinks I remember one oh, of my competitors. Oh, he was competitors. wonderful. Yeah, he I was wonderful. Find who out who that guy, guy was, like, please. Do, you have a, do we have a record of anybody who's been in this game? It's like, it was so generic. Oh, well, there probably is. It's probably like Squid Game where there's just books. Oh, of yeah. all of them in There's the back. There's gotta be. Yeah. Because this is just kind of Squid Game, too. Yeah, let's add that on it's to it. all of it. Yeah. We, we as human beings are very obsessed with the idea of trying to win a game where, where people are hunting you. Yes. I do love those kinds of stories. Oh, they're fantastic. This is just not a good one. This one, it's it's an interesting it's, premise. It's actually like not said, that bad of a premise. It but really it was is just, not. The execution was just way Even off. the idea of having to get a gymnast because something about it, you need to be you good need to at be obstacles. To, right, you have that like flexibility it's not and that all of that. Bad. Mm -hmm. And the strength that like the gymnasts have. I mean, it makes sense, sure. Now then, and combine with with these types of like fighting styles and make a gym kata. Sure, yeah. I love that. Great. Combine combining fighting styles is really cool at times. Mm. You've, they've done it in different things. Mm. So the sound mix in this is awful. I can't hear a thing that they're saying. They're talking about the town. We were of wound. I stood next to the speaker. We they said something about there being cannibals. And, the, and, they, and they think that the town of crazies has cannibals. I don't, right. We missed a lot of that. But, but there's but the town the, of crazies. The town we of crazies that. is established here. And it's like one that of the part, last things. One of the you last have to things do. is you have to get th through the town of crazies. The king announces that there's going to be a wedding tomorrow after the games. There's going to be a wedding. <laughs> and he announces that the princess is going to be marrying Zamir, the advisor. So it is just like Jasmine and Jafar. Yes. I Except said, he wasn't like you know, manipulated with the staff that we know of. That we know. No, of. he's just an idiot. He's just he just loves his people and goes, nah, everybody's a good person. That's kind of what he thinks. Well, we find out later, like you said, that the princess is required to marry the head advisor. Absolutely. It's tradition, and right. and because of this uproar, mm -hmm. the king is trying to. That's like he's trying to be good with tradition. I think so. I think he's just trying to make the because people happy. Kurt's like, why can't you break tradition? And the last time he Which did that... Which doesn't make sense either. I, whatever. So like, this, Why would you ask a, a country to break their tradition? This, Because they Rachel like their culture. is when you get Thorg. This is when Thorg comes out. Thorg. So some guy... This just... This random With a dude. woman on each arm mm -hmm. walks out. Big buff dude, like wrestler. And they start celebrating again. He looks like a big pro wrestler. He looks like Kevin, Kevin Nash. <laughs> he, he looks really like... Does, he looks so. like bloated Kevin Nash. Yeah, he's way more bloated. Yeah. Like, Kevin Nash has always been kind of svelte. Like, we were just at a con where Kevin Nash oh, yeah, actually met, yeah. bumped well, into we Rachel. <laughs> oh my god, the man is huge, by and, the way. <laughs> but he's not, like, he's still not, like, chubby hilarious for being, like, an me. old wrestler. He's still kind of in shape. That's true. Yeah. So, like, this guy looked like a bloated. That's why I was, it was intimidating when he bumped into me. I was like, woof. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, man. Literally. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> That's a fun little anecdote. You're making money. <laughs> Kevin Nash ran into me. So, for this guy, I'm just going to, if I need to say a line that he says, I'm just going to do lapsed fans version of Kevin Nash, which is just the laziest man ever, man. Yeah. So, John knows who he is. Yes. Because he says Thorg and right. goes to shake his hand. Right. And Thorg doesn't take it. No. So is I is this an all-star? Is he this must, a ringer? I think he's got to be a ringer in a different country. Is he from Parmesan? I don't. Ooh. Because a foreigner has never won. Do you think they allow them to fight together then? So maybe they put in a ringer to stop the others because that's I kind of not, what happens. I could not figure this out. I had no idea. It I didn't know why. It makes me think he works with Zamir and he's like stopping everybody else. Yeah, it made no sense. I couldn't understand it. So the princess and Cabot are making eyes at each other because clearly she's trying to, ex she wants to explain she to him why to she explain, has to marry Zamir. Right. Zamir picks up on this. He takes his shirt off, stands up, takes out some size. Oh my God. 
Then he just starts flipping them around. Like, show it off. And the rubes of Parmistan just go fucking nuts. Because they I just love, love they love wonderful. this shit. We want to see fighting. We want to see fancy swordsmanship. We want to see it all. And he throws the sides next to Kurt Thomas. Who doesn't flinch. No. No, you're right. He does not flinch. That's right. And Zamir tells him, like, you don't understand. She's mine. Or whatever. And he says, it's not over yet. Put your hardware back in your pants. So, ooh, Kurtam is getting... You must understand. She's mine. It's not over yet. So put your hardware back in your pants. I mean, Kurt didn't keep his hardware in his pants, so... Yeah, really. He won. He got the girl. You, my my daughter's supposed to be a virgin. <laughs> the wedding is off. You know what? That's not a part of it. They don't know. Maybe we, maybe she doesn't have to be. <laughs> she can sleep around all she wants until she gets married, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe even after that. They're very progressive. That's right. For Parmesan. <laughs> maybe even after that. She can have her own harem? Yes. So then what's Cabot's problem? Just become part of her harem. He doesn't like, want him, though. Zamir wouldn't care. No, he Zemir does care. Zamir just wants the country. Yeah. You don't, oh, you think that he wants part it, of it he is to get the princess? Like, I'm going to make this monogamous, mm. and you don't get to have her. Yeah. That's right. Okay. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want him to be the favorite. That's fair. I I'll, I will believe that. <laughs> okay. Later on, he threatens Weird Lady with no tongue. Yes. To take him Still to the princess. Still don't understand this. This makes no sense. I think this is just a waste time. He puts a sword he puts to her throat. A sword up to her throat. Or I guess it's a dagger. Yeah. He takes her all the way to the princess's room. Yes. He goes, "Is this the princess's room?" And she nods. Yeah. Hands her the sword. And says, don't be afraid. <laughs> and tells her to have the princess meet him in the garden. Yeah, like, tell her this. Why did you, did you just ask her? Why didn't you go in there? One. One. Why didn't you just tell Weird Lady to tell the princess this? Right. Why did you need to threaten Weird Lady this way? And then go all the way to the room and do nothing. Yeah. Because there wasn't like, oh, I'm going to rescue her later. So now I know where she is. There was none of that. There was no Romeo and Juliet. She, like, is at the balcony outside. Yeah. There was none of that. Yeah. Very bizarre. Very bizarre. That they did it in that fashion. Very, very strange. No, because it just makes you look at him and go, why did you threaten this, this like, innocent woman? And it goes on for a while, yeah, too. It really does, because they go past a window to a, a courtyard. Of windows. And then this other, like, warrior is keeping guard and, like, he's trying to hide from him. There was, it went on. So, Princess comes out in, like, nightgown in the, the garden. Right. This is where she says that it's tradition and mm -hmm. all of this stuff. She also informs and this him- this is, like, a forbidden love. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. She also informs Kurt it's about- the longest she's talked, by the way. Yes. She gets this whole exposition of this- Zamir's planning to do a coup and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, we know this already. Right. We were told this. He was told this. And he goes, really? Like, huh? Yeah. He acts surprised. Did they forget they told us that? Yeah, that's what I'm like. Did they forget about this? And now they're like making it a thing. But she also says that Zamir is going to make sure tomorrow's game is is deadly so no one will survive. Yes. Which I don't think anybody survives anyway. So but what yeah, the but fuck I are think the whole about? idea is that she's saying he's going to make it worse. He's not He's, he's not, not going to allow not playing anybody. The, he's not playing yeah. the rules. He's not even letting you try. He's yeah. just going to kill you. Yeah. She begs him not to play. Which I didn't think that was an, like an option at this point. You're in the game. Yeah, I think you're in the game. I think you're pretty committed. He says he'll be killed anyway. Also true. What does that mean, though? I guess if he tries not to do the games, he They'll would get kill killed anyways. Anyway. Okay. I would assume. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So if he tried to leave the country, he's going to get killed. Yeah. So they kiss, and he says, I'll win. Okay. And then... <laughs> because they hear like footsteps so the princess starts running in in one direction and her running is it, her arms, <laughs> her arms are, are flailing and like her her outfit she looks like a ghost running through a graveyard because it's like a very flowy nightgown so it's like whoosh, 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 as she's running away with her hands up in the air and i said did they tell her to do that and rachel posited that she's trying to attract the attention of the guards. And just make it look like she's the only one out there. But she's the princess. She can't just go out in the garden? I don't think so. You think that she's like under lock and key? Kind of. Because they're like, why would you? Why would we let you go outside? Maybe it's, it's kind of dangerous for like mm. royalty to be outside, you know, at night. Yeah. Like, don't do that. And then 
instead of, I guess, just letting her go, he kicks them in the face yeah. and does Jimkata. Like, why did you bring attention why did you to yourself? Bother? And if you knew that that was allowed, then why did you bother? Yes. Very odd. So, it is the day of the game. The next morning is the day of the game. And the king comes out. They do the whole spiel again about it being the game. And here we go. Right. So, again, we can probably run down his fellow competitors. He's got wrestler guy, Borg. Wrestler, yes. Windbreaker dude. Yep. Bull cut. Bull cut. Asian guy. Red jacket. And then there's another black windbreaker guy. Like, why are they wearing wind? Okay. Not only are they wearing windbreakers. make a bit more sense. He's wearing white pants. What's with the white pants? You don't, you if don't you do are, a game You're outside. being chased. You know you're being chased as part of this. We're dark clothes. Yeah, we're camouflage. Dark green, something. dark brown, yeah. dark black. Yeah. Like, why are you wearing white pants? It just... You stick out. It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like Chewbacca living on end. Yeah, there's like a bright blue, like, sweatsuit. They're all dressed terribly. And I guess it's maybe so that you can identify them as a viewer. You know what the wrestler also reminds me of? The guy from uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, Ogre? Yeah. Yeah, because he's got the red bandana on. Yeah. I couldn't figure out if that red bandana was supposed to be like, oh, we can identify him as a, he is a warrior because he has the bandana. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So they begin, King does the thing where he like kind of begins it. And the wrestler starts beating him up immediately. So all of yes. the guys run out, he, and like, wrestler guy like pulls him, him back, kicks him in the face, beats him up. Yes. I thought that the more was going to come of that. I guess Kurt just got up and started running again. He must have. Because but it, it slowed him down because now he's in the back, which he was in the back anyways. Right. And Zamir starts his coup, which I thought, like, are they going to start stop Kurt? But they didn't. Right. Because Zamir says to stop stop the princess because the princess was like gonna gonna go run to him yeah which sure i mean honestly make that would have yeah, made sense in, in any he sense she shouldn't be allowed to interfere in the right, game that's cheating yeah and then he says to take the king and the princess back to the palace or whatever. right and then he just starts yeah and then, and then, yeah because the king is supposed to tell him and he like yells like no no, no, no yeah, you're, you're cheating yeah, you're, yeah that's I'm cheating supposed to tell i'm supposed you to, to tell start. you yeah and yeah. he ignores it right so this, now we know okay the coup is happening the coup is happening this should be a hell of a tell-off for king mel brooks but he doesn't <laughs> he still doesn't see it so they go through the cornfield zamir and the ninjas are in pursuit john tries to go slow i thought I well, thought he is, what he was he trying is to back do. because he was beaten the hell. Right. But I thought what he was doing was he was trying to let Zamir and company pass by him. So, like, then he'd be behind the horses. Yes, it did feel that way. Yeah. And then he was, like, trying to be, like, let Let, let him go after the others first or something. Right. And, like, I'll, like, sneak, you know, sneak I'll behind sneak while they're trying to find it. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's what he was trying to do, but they spot him immediately and then they chase him down. Right. This was that first reveal of the judge with the flag, and it was Yes, hilarious. because he was, like, by himself, and all of a sudden behind him is this man with a flag yeah, pointing. Yeah, the, the camera just slowly pans. pans, and then there's just a man pointing. Amazing. We both burst out laughing yeah. because of it. it, it it's, it's comical. Because it the guy's just there. Yeah. The group gets to the rope climb thing, mm -hmm. and Zamir is breaking the rules at this point because he's shooting down the guys. Yes. For some reason, he decides right. not to shoot down Kurt Thomas. Yes, he decides to go with a different tactic. So he asks for a torch, and he tries to burn the rope. Now He thinks the fire is going to be faster than Kurt. For one, I feel like no matter what this rope is made out of, hemp, bamboo... Yeah, it wouldn't burn that quickly. It's not going to burn that quickly. Unless it's, like, covered in something. Yeah, and maybe they cover it in oil as part of the game. But... It gets up there, but not in time. Oh, yeah, definitely not in time. So Nowhere John near. Gets to the like top. That, it's like feet away. Yeah. Why don't they just shoot him down? I don't know. Like they did the other guys? Is it just to make a statement? I, I, Is it hubris? Maybe. It's part of his ego. Yeah. I don't know. Because he uses different tools every time he fights something and does something different. Yeah. Every time he does some sort of action or goes after our, our guy, he uses a different tool. Every yes. single time. Yeah. 
So that was stupid. And it starts a brush fire. So there's yes. like a little fire by that doesn't John. Go anywhere. Doesn't go but anywhere. there is a fire. Yeah. Now we just started a forest oh, fire. Oh, kind Good of job. funny though. He tells the one guy, like the one pointer at the top of the hill. He's like, he broke the rules. Kill him. Yeah. What is that? Like he thinks that the, the pointer is going to like go, yeah. oh, he broke the rules. I have to kill him now. I'm a pointer, dude. Yeah. And he's on Zamir's side too. Right. As far as we know. I would assume so. I think all of these people are okay. like, these are like Zamir's warriors. Sure. Because like, they well, work. I don't know. Maybe the pointers are the, the kings. Yeah, but I feel like they all work for Zamir. Yeah, you're right. You're I feel right. like that could have been a thing too. Anybody who is cloaked, there like, should. You know what? Guarded? There should have been. There should have been another warrior that was loyal to the king. Yes. So then, when Zamir asks him, like, shoot him, he like refuses to do it, and he's like, not this time, Zamir, or something right? like that. And then there, and then there's a battle yes. between the ninjas. Because some of them because are now with the some king of them are and the some king of them and some of those mirrors. That would have been good. Mm -hmm. But I even think later the princess does say something about, but they're masked. Like you don't even know who they are. They're his warriors. So I think you're right that they're all that they're his, all just his guys. warriors. Yeah. The guy dressed in red and the wrestler make it to the ropes. Yes. This is where I was wondering if the actor or stuntman this playing the wrestler guy is wearing a muscle suit. He looks like he's, like, no. buffed out, like, almost too much here. Well, I'm wondering if it's just, like, the puffy sweatshirt he has on, because yeah. it's probably cold or That's something. That's true. He's wearing a big puffy sweatshirt. Because it's, like... Maybe he's not wearing a muscle suit. I think he's just really big. I think he's just really big, and yeah. he's just wearing a tracksuit that makes him look bigger. <laughs> yeah. Because of it, yeah. it just kind of makes him puffy. The one guy is limping, I guess, from he something must have that hurt himself him. at some point. He gets speared. He gets speared in the back. Yeah. yeah. So that guy's taken out. I think he was the guy that was dressed in the black and red windbreaker. Yeah. The blue guy windbreaker, I want to say it's the bull cut man. I think he's bull cut. He gets to the end of the chasm. Mm -hmm. And then one of the ninjas just shoves him off. Yes. <laughs> and then he dies. So he is gone. Well, you get another dummy shot. Oh, you we get do get another dummy rocks. shot. Yeah. He hits the rocks. Yeah, which is great. Orange or red tracksuit, like the, the brighter orangey red tracksuit, mm -hmm. gets across by, like, you know, crawling across as you'd expect. Our wrestler friend ruins the facade of this rope. Oh, yeah. You thought you could tell he was walking. walking. He's totally pulling down the rope and just walking because he can't hold himself up because he's so big. All right, I'm sorry, but you ruined the the look of this for me. Zamir catches up as John gets to the ropes, and again he this time he asks for a sword, mm -hmm. and he's gonna a hack. different tool. Yeah, and this time he's gonna hack at the rope, which makes sense. That's what I would have done as well. Now he d waits for a while, and again instead of shooting him with an arrow. <laughs> yes. So he's right at the end. John is. He comes up. Another ninja guy kind of tries to go at him with a knife. Kicks and, him in the face. And he misses. John kicks him in the face, and the guy kicks Falls. him off. Yeah, he yeah. kicks him off. The cliff, no dummy, though. We don't get a no dummy, dummy shot this time. Very Sadly. disappointing. Too many dummies. With, they had to like change its outfit, so they're just like, eh, no dummy for this one. But they've all made it past the chasm, so this is as far as we've ever seen in the games at this Which point. Which is surprising, because like his dad didn't make it across the chasm. Right. So you would have thought that this was like one of the end things, like his dad was like that yeah, good, like close but to it's the end. not. Yeah, no, it's not. At some point, Asian guy and wrestler guy start fighting. Yes. And I thought, why not have like a big Russian as the wrestler guy? Like, why not? Ooh, like, that would the have whole been thing is that the other side, meaning the Soviets, yes, want to put their defense system here, right? So why not have it be like a big Russian man, right? Is on there and he's in it with Zamir. To Maybe like... he's supposed to be, but they but just he... couldn't get a guy I mean, his who name looked is Russian. Thorg, but he talks kind of like this. When he talks well, and does like a he's probably lines. also not an actor. <laughs> well, something. obviously not. He's just a wrestler. <laughs> he's just a wrestler. Wrestler man strangles Asian guy to death. Yes. It, during and this while fight. the like the flag guy just watches. The flag guy just watches. <laughs> this is where I was confused because I guess you were saying if there's nobody coming, the flag guy puts his arms down. So once I the, was like, once the last person in the race passes a flag guy, they put their arms down. Okay. 
I've no I noticed it before like earlier. Because Wrestler Man makes a big deal of it. He's like looks he's, and he's watching like, to see if like okay. the, so when the arms went down, he's like the the he just passed him. Oh. So okay. he knew he was so like he catching go, up. Okay, okay. They start climbing in the woods. That's how I took it. Wrestler guy starts fighting Cabot now. Yeah. There are ninjas with arrows. Yeah. And in John's mind, he hears back Falcon Guy. I I was like, wait, that's Falcon Guy. I thought one of the, the warriors yelled it, but it was actually like they made it a little echoey. It was like Luke hearing Obi-Wan. Yeah, so it was axe through the air or something. Yeah, it was like, it was like through the wind. Why, why is this happening? John knows that arrows are coming because he can hear them in the wind. I, oh, is that what it means? I think so. Mm. So he hears it and he dodges like behind yes. a tree or something. Wrestler guy gets shot with an arrow and presumably dies. Right. Which I thought was very anticlimactic after you built him up to be like your second big bad guy yes. in the game. He just gets well, shot with uh, an arrow. Just shot with an arrow. I mean, I guess it makes him more clever. So, like, ah, uh, the cleverness, like, beat the beast. I don't know. Zamir snaps his fingers. And all of his ninjas start shooting arrows at him. Mm -hmm. And another tool. Kurt Ninja. dodges them all in the trees again. Yeah. Which means that he skinny like sides up to this tree mm -hmm. so that he doesn't get shot. And they shot anything. into the trees instead of, you know, the area where there were no trees before that. Yeah. Because he was running through like a field and then it turned. Or just into... keep shooting at him. Yeah, I don't know. Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. He's the last man standing at this point. Or, or no, 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 he's not. He's not I thought the last he was the last man standing, but pullover but we, guy, windbreaker right. guy is still is still ahead of everybody. Yes, he pulled ahead. Yeah. He shouts something toward one of the judges, I think. I don't know what he said. Can't remember. I just wrote Wait. it in my notes. Oh, he like comes up to the the flag guy. Oh and yes. he yells to the crazy, I expect. And I, I, thinking the guy is going to say something back to him and then says something else. Yeah, and then just moves on. Because now we are in crazy town. This is a completely different movie at this point. This crazyville, I feel like they were like, oh, yeah, we got this, this uh, like script the for crazy town. This is it. And uh, we'll just put it in that, that picture with the, with the gymnast. That's fine. Because it, it, like, it takes on like a different tone. It does. It like immediately like changes tone. And I really thought, like, you guys needed to build this up more as something that was going to be, like, the biggest thing. And but I feel it, like we're stuck here for at least 20 minutes. We truly town. are. Because he, like, walks through the town like we're in Silent Hill. It's foggy. There's people laughing in windows and acting crazy. Well, that was my problem with it. It's like, if you're in this and you're just trying to win the game, why are you, like... Walking through town like as a tourist, like checking out the sights. Yeah. Like, why aren't you Run trying to get through. through the town? There... He tries to get into a door for some reason. Well, there's a fog. He, he There's a town square. There's a goat. There's a well. There's people laughing. Yes. There's a dude scraping a knife. Yes. So they just put all their crazy people in this town. Like you That's get banished what... to this town if you're what is this? crazy. If we if we think that you have something wrong with you mentally, I guess we're putting you in this town. See you later. Have fun. And they all kind of just live in harmony. <laughs> apparently Laughing they together. like. Apparently they are getting along well enough for this town to stay functional. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy we don't like man. normies. Get out of our town. No normies in our town. <laughs> A crazy man comes up laughing. And he's wielding a scythe again or something. Well, first, Kurt... like, a trap falls down. He almost gets well, killed. Well, yeah, yeah. Some, oh, okay, like, fine. Thing. Moving on. Kurt, well, yeah, no, you're right. Like, There's, like, traps. Traps, I guess, which they've got to be set up for the game. Or did the crazy people come up with these? I think the crazy people these? just, like, are having fun with, like, sharp objects, I guess. Crazy man. <laughs> Tries to swipe at John a couple of times. He dodges it, ducks yes. it. And then grabs onto a pipe. For some reason, mm -hmm. Crazy Man chops his own arm off and limps away sobbing. Do you think he thought something was wrong with his own arm? Like, did his arm start like fighting against him, or like, because he's now? Him? This is a fascinating theory. <laughs> I don't know what you're about to how what you're saying now. I don't 
no, I'm trying to get into the mine. Like, this guy just grabs onto a pipe and then, like, goes, oh, God, I have to cut my own arm off. I guess maybe he's committing seppuku of the arm because he wasn't able to kill Kurtanis. he's like, I can't control this arm. I have to cut it off. I think he's just a crazy person. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. But it's very odd. Everything, was, like we all looked confused, including Kurt, <laughs> all and of who these, just like watched all... it happen. It was like, all right, I'm moving on. All of these set pieces very odd. Mm -hmm. there, he sees a dog licking up some blood, and mm -hmm. then he sees that the the last guy, or who he thought he thought pastel was the other jacket. last guy, pastel, yeah. Is, he had like a, a pitchfork a, in his head. Yeah, a bunch of stuff is in Everything him. was like he was pinned to a door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's dead. And then Kurt goes down Diagon Alley. No, not Diagon Alley. What was it? Nocturne Alley. That's right. Because <laughs> he gets down this alley. Get lost, my dear. <laughs> yes. That's they what happens. Like, he goes down him. this foggy hallway. And they all converge on him. These giggling women. Yes. These weeping, giggling women. Like, they're weeping and giggling, and they converge on him. But he dodges them. He attacks them. There's he a just bunch of punches attacks. them in the face. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of, like, turn towards the wall then. Like, oh. And then, to our surprise, <laughs> the wrestler isn't dead. Yeah, he opens the door and goes, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he Kurt doesn't act surprised to see him. He just runs the other direction. I mean, honestly, I would too if somebody's running through the door. But like, he opens the door and goes, "Oh no!" Closes the door and runs away. <laughs> but wrestler guy's all bloody. He's oh, got he is. the on. arrow is still in his chest. Yeah, I, I mean, don't pull it out. He got stabbed. Don't pull. Well, it no. Out. If you ever, folks at home, if you ever get shot with an arrow. Or stabbed in any way. I think and what it's you're... lodged in you, you keep it in. Well, if if it's a stabbing, you keep it in. If it's an arrow, I think you're supposed to run up, run you push it something so you push it to have through. it go all the way through. Mm. I don't think that's like if it's like the heart. I think you're supposed to keep it in. But if it's like just in you, like it's in your like shoulder then or something, you continue to push it. You're through. supposed to push it all the way through because pulling it out because it's an arrowhead is going to do more damage. You want right. to just push it. Oh, all Oh yeah, way through. because it's got like the sides mm -hmm. would like grab things on the way right. out mm, so folks that's some advice out there if you're ever in the game and you get shot with an arrow just run up to a shove your tree the other side of it push it in yeah further. unless you can tell it's like in an artery then i think you keep it in yeah don't put it on so that it I, I stops know. the blood from hey folks at home we don't know anything about this don't listen to this past yeah, don't segment. actually uh don't actually take any advice from shelf life and don't podcast. say you took the advice from us either absolutely not about no. anything that is that was all a joke don't listen to us <laughs> just listen to what we say to put on your shelf a guy grabs Cabot from a window at this point. Yes. This is where I just was like, this is so long. Like oh this sequence takes fucking it just forever. Kept going. Okay. This is bizarre. A man in a white robe. Oh my god, what was this? What was this? I feel like this was like the director wanted to put this in a movie at some point. He was like a priest or a cult leader? Yeah. In a white robe. White robe beckoning is him. beckoning him to come forward. And meanwhile. He like kind of this... just—he was like debating it. He's like, "Okay, maybe." A man is standing in a corner. Oh my god! He was just behind these baskets, and I was like, "Just let him be," because he's just like standing there, like. So John starts walking toward the man in the white robe, who's like, I guess, like by a church or something. Yeah, he's like a priest. Mm-hmm. Very creepily, then. Oh, very creepy. The face. They zoom in on the man behind the basket. The man behind this basket, where you thought he was just kind of standing there, turns around. The face was fake. It and was... the face was fake. <laughs> and it was on the back. And it was of on the head. back of this man's hat. <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> why does this happen? What the fuck is happening? Why is this happening? <laughs> what is going on? And then. <laughs> add to this the man in the white why robe, why he turns around to like open the door and the whole back of his robe is cut open and you see his you ass. see man ass he's completely naked and jim Cotta. the fuck is going on and that's when he kind of goes oh i don't want to go that way and then it gets attacked by the man with two faces yeah the man with two faces attacks him <laughs> Like, what the fuck was part of... What? Why did this happen? What was the point of this deception? This was weird. 
I don't understand. I don't understand. I have no idea why this happened. Huh. But he, you know, does some flippy moves. Like, did they the just think that this was, like, cool or something? Maybe it was just or to show creepy? how weird. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be creepy. I think it's like, all it's supposed to be weird town. and creepy and crazy, and there we are. And the mask on the the fake mask it's is really good. Cool. Like, it's really good. I, didn't, I did bar, not I expect it was the face. that. Yeah. <laughs> But, and I still didn't know until he started turning. I'm like, wait, is it fake? And well, then <laughs> folks at home, if you do not watch this, I'm sure that sequence is on YouTube or you something. You have sequence. to go watch that part. It was weird. Wrestler guy finds him again. Yeah. And By the pigs? Well, he chases him down to a like a pig barn. Yeah. So this is with the pigs then. He starts like, he like he jumps over the pigs. He rides over the pigs. Yeah, he's like climbing them. He climbs the pigs. And the crazies find them, and wrestler guy is like struggling to like get in through the pig pen and chase Cabot. I don't know why right. he's chasing him. Split up if at you know this, the crazies are coming. Right, because at this point, just win the game. But I think you're right. I think he was a plant, and he's stopping the others from winning. Yeah, I think he's just a plant. Mm -hmm. The crazies corner them, and Cabot kicks wrestler off Thorg. Kicks yes, him off. Yes, because they start the, climbing the wall. Yeah. And Thorg is murdered by the crazies with pitchforks. Yeah. And then we just presume the pigs eat him. Oh, yeah. Easy cleanup, because pigs will eat anything. Never trust a man with a pig farm. Oh, yeah. These, he, he, I don't he know. Just... That was Michael Caine and not the yeah, guy Yeah, I don't know snatch, why that was but... Michael Caine, but you know what? It's okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I feel like he would say you that. You don't it remember that? Canon. You don't remember uh, Michael Caine telling Batman not to trust any man with a pig farm? It would make sense. It's an easy way to get rid of a body. And now we get to the notorious, probably the most notorious scene in this movie, I think. Oh, this is this is fantastic. So he goes to like the town square of the crazy town. Yes. And the crazies surround him. They corner him. Mm -hmm. And they're oh, like. It, it's all in slow motion. Is that this part? No, no that's, that's later. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. They attack him. And he happens to have a conveniently. <laughs> The most Stru there's a structure which I guess structure. is like a horse, like a tie up, tie up your horse. Oh, maybe that's what they were going for. But it's just a pommel horse. It's just a pommel horse. It's not like like to tie your your animal up. It's just a pommel horse. And they attack him one at a time. Mm -hmm. While he's swinging around and he's and swinging doing around, his, doing his moves, doing his gymkata. He's kicking them all in the face. It's great. This goes on for fucking ever. Way too long. He's doing this forever. It's amusing. It's kind of. It's, it's kind of good. Kinda it's fun. good at first. It just goes on too long. Yes. It overstays its welcome. Yeah, because otherwise it is kind of fun. It's a fun, yes, goofy set Yes, it's a fun thing because he gets to use his gymnastics to fight. Yeah. Again, I like that concept. He gives sweet chin music to one guy yes. at one point. It, it, but it is too long. It's just too long. He finally gets out of that section. I can't remember how, but he like escapes the. He just like runs through or yeah, something. Yeah, he he had, he fights off enough of them that he like gets. And he an opens opening. like a. It's a still window. going on. It's like it's just... ridiculous. He gets out and climbs some stairs, but they mm -hmm. have him surrounded now. This, this is slow motion. This and... everything goes into slow oh motion. Oh my god! And it doesn't and I was like, stop. Ooh, something's gonna happen. I actually was like, okay, all right. We're doing something interesting cinematically. We're going slow motion. It I mean, something doesn't. big's about to happen. Fucking stop! It never stops. It doesn't go anywhere. The slow motion we goes on forever. He's slow motion staring down every place. It's slow motion with them running towards him. It's slow motion with the dogs being released. It's slow motion with him going up a, a corridor because he's backed into a corner and he's climbing. It's still slow motion as he's climbing. Rachel's the doing walls. this just to make you understand how long it goes on. That's how it motion. felt. <laughs> I assume that was to expand the running time. Maybe. But I don't think they needed to do that. Oh, no. The dogs tree him, and he gets st he gets stuck on a wall. So they're like there's like bars on a window. I think he's trying to like break a window. Yeah, to like I think go he's trying his. to get through and it. He's or something. straining and he's making these Kurt Thomas noises, and he's like, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he didn't just try to climb over. Yeah, your Jim Kata, like climb just over. Just keep going over. Like why why did you stop there? Just keep going up. All of this is he's in like, slow oh, motion. He's at the rooftop. Like, all get of this. On the roof. Yeah, all of this is in slow motion. There's a ninja coming down. So now he's slowly walking down the stairs towards him because yes. there's more stairs up at the top of this building. But when we think like, oh no, a ninja, he's going to attack gonna stab him. Kurt. He extends his hand to him. 
Da -da -da -da. All of this is still in slow motion. Still. He gives him his hand, and Rachel asks during the screening. She said, oh, I bet this is the main guy from the beginning because they're yeah. doing it in slow motion. They're clearly trying to, like, make it a thing. Yeah, and I thought, like, well, he came out of the shadows before, so why can't he come out of the shadows again? And then like, he infiltrated it. Rachel was very excited because she was right, because it was the guy from the beginning. And then he goes, Dad, yep. and it reveals that it was his dad, and Rachel, what the fuck? <laughs> I got really confused because the two guys look identical. <laughs> so it's the dad and not the other guy. Who you never thought it was CIA it. guy. I thought it was CIA guy yeah. coming again to, like, save him because he did it before. Yeah, but in actuality, it was his it's dad. It's just dad. So the dad wasn't dead. He... Which I think he was the guy holding the flag when he talked to him and went, oh, it's crazy town, isn't it? Oh, you and think so? And I think he was, because he, like, looked towards him. I his, went to his eyes, like, moved? I went to Wikipedia to figure this out. Was I wrong? No, I don't know. Oh, just, we don't know. But I went to Wikipedia to figure out how he didn't die. Yeah, I also want to know that. So Wikipedia just says that he is saved by a Parmistan warrior who turns out to be Cabot's father, Colonel Cabot. Mm -hmm. His father explains that while playing the game, he fell and disabled his arm, but was allowed... <laughs> Who says it like that? I guess like dislocated. Yeah, uh, folks at home fix that on Wikipedia. I don't like this. I don't like that abled in there. It doesn't make any sense. You dislocated it. But was Fine. allowed by Parmistan warriors to live. And that's so I where... guess he fell but didn't die. And I do remember him saying something about. I thought I they were using him this. for diplomacy or like ransom some, or something some like that. Thing. Yeah, but I, I whatever. I don't understand. Because, like, wouldn't the FBI guy know that he's alive then? Not necessarily. They don't if let they anything get in or him? out. Yeah, no, I, well, if they wanted to use him, yeah, but oh, I, I guess, guess they, they just were thinking about they it. They were thinking about using we're him. We're like, well, they pretend to just fake. in case yeah. we have to. Yeah, it was a thought, but they didn't actually go through with it. Yeah. The princess and the king are back in the palace. Yeah. And they're, they're being forced to stay. They're being stay. forced to stay there. And the princess says that Zamir is clearly making a coup, and the king is still trusts him despite being he a goes, prisoner. No, it's all protection. Yeah. It's like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the, this king's a moron. He's an idiot. He deserves to have this coup t it, it taken out of him because he's a it's, fucking moron. It's very unsurprising. It's all happening. And the princess says that the American is the is our only chance, and she takes off this, like. It, clearly like a traditional dress almost like a not kimono what am i thinking it is it's like it's like a traditional like korean jacket yeah or something, something right? it's, it's definitely like something where they're trying to like invoke like that soviet kush kind of area but she takes it off and she reveals a leotard and she, rachel thought she looked like catwoman oh it was like yeah it was bodysuit catwoman bo yeah woman body like a bodysuit it was mm -hmm. definitely a, like a bodysuit like they're definitely showing off her figure here, I yes. think, is the point. Zamir is on horseback, and his ninjas are on a hillside, while John and his dad talk. And this is where the dad says, like, he was allowed to live and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Zamir tried to use me as a dip as diplomatic bait, bait. is what he says. Mm. Or I, that's what I wrote down. I don't know if he actually said that, because, Probably again, does. everybody's mumbling in this entire movie. Yeah, They hog John and Mr. Cabot. Right. And then his dad gets shot in the back. Yes. So it's like all of that. They're reunited just for like 30 for two seconds. seconds. And then as his dad's dying, he just goes, win, Johnny. Win. <laughs> it's great to see you. You'll never know. <laughs> So then John runs after the ninjas or there's like the one ninja that shot the dad. So he like runs after that guy to chase him down. And I was just like, that was fast. Like that, that whole slow motion sequence, you could have done a little bit more yeah. with this part instead of doing that slow motion it stuff. It was so nuts. John kicks the Jim Cotta's the one ninja, steals his horse. So now he's on horseback too. Mm -hmm. And there's a chase on horseback. 
I thought this was going to go on forever because everything else oh, was everything going on forever. everything goes on forever. We could have gone through, like, different biomes at that point. I wouldn't have been surprised. That would have been great. If, like, <laughs> there's, like, a wi like, like a winter and then, like, a desert and then, like, a rainforest. Just constant chase. He jumps over what I think is supposed to be a gorge because they, like, kind of do it in slow motion and make it look like the they, he, like, yes. got the horse to jump. Because there's also a voice overlay of... What's his name? It, there's a voice overlay of Zamir going... Jump, you fools. Yeah, because the rest of the ninjas don't follow him. Right. He's the only one that goes over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it definitely must be like a big gap, but I'm like, the horses aren't going to want to do yeah, that. The, horses... the other ones got tricked into it. Yeah. He's running. Hell no. <laughs> Zamir is chasing John down. So now we're in our final battle here yep. between Zamir and, and Kurt. Kurt. Kurt Thomas. <laughs> is Kurt Angle? After Kurt Thomas, or is Kurt, no, Kurt Angle? Angle's his real name? Just Kurt Angle. Yeah, they okay. just happen to both be Olympians named Kurt. I'm just kidding. It's a, a very Kurt's. popular Olympic <laughs> Olympian name. Yeah, where is Kurt Angle's Jim Cotta? He could have had a Jim. He could have had a Jim Cotta. Mm -hmm. That would have been pretty good. Yeah, could have had a lot of wrestlers in it though. I would have actually enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah, Kurt Angle, if you're out there listening, and I know you are, hundred percent. See if you can get somebody to reboot Jim Cotta with you in the Kurt Thomas role. You're right. a little older now, but you could be like, oh, he could be the dad. No, no. Oh, yeah, he could be the dad. Otherwise, it's like, uh, I, you know, I'm too old for this shit. And they're oh, like, no, we yeah. need you to come back for one more mission, Kurt. Yeah, it's just like the Indiana Jones reboot. Yeah, we're gonna reboot Jim Cotta. Yeah, but put Kurt Angle as the old mm -hmm. man. Yeah, he's Let's the old man, it. and then I can't think of and Simone Biles is the oh hell Simone yeah. Biles is the new Kurt Thomas. Oh, that would be perfect. Be Folks perfect. at home, we've done it. We we did it. We did it. We did it. End the fucking show now, Rachel. Get on the horn with the producers. We gotta get it. We're gonna Roman Reigns could be our uh, our Roman Reigns could be Thorg. Thorg. Or Zamir. <laughs> or Zamir. He could be either one. Dude, he could be Zamir. Roman Reigns as Zamir is actually a pretty good idea. That would be Batista really good. could be in it. Ooh, Batista is Korg. I'm Thorg. I keep wanting Batista to call is Korg. Thorg. I do like that. Korg is from Thor. <laughs> So there we go. We figured it out. We figured out how to reboot right. this. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> so they start fighting. Yep. A lot of flippy uh, fighting. They start fighting. The horse is in the background though, just kind of standing there. And I thought it was like kind of funny because it's like, yeah, the the horse is me. He's just like, anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Whenever we want to go to the next spot, I'm here. I'm just gonna eat some grass. John has a stick. Zamir has another like scythe or something. Or like scimitar? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's maybe like that's the what shape it is. of it is really thick. Yeah, Cal Drago definitely used one of these things. Oh hell yeah! I kept thinking of Cal Drago this entire time too. He misses a bunch. We get a fist fight now because mm -hmm. he he threw it at him or something. Zamir. Oh, there was a there was a um Hurricane Rana. Zamir takes him down. For a while, and then John gets back up, and you. I thought there was going to be more voiceover because mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be like Them use your use your Jim Kata. Oh, like yeah. I thought that's where the the name drop would come in, right? But it he, was like you're only using this; you have to use the Jim yeah. Kata. But he starts using the flips and using the Jim Kata a lot right. more, and he does a Hurricane Rana, but he keeps the legs locked on. <laughs> So, like he squeezes he his face. He squeezes his neck and snaps his lips. It snaps. I didn't expect that because no. I was like, oh, that was more violent than I expected. Now, it granted, was. you got the chopped arm off earlier, but yeah, I did but not expect our hero snap to neck. snap Zamir's neck. Right. Because he's been just like taking people down as in like knocking them out. He hasn't been killing people. Right. As far as we know. Right. It seems like he's just knocking them out. Yeah. 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 Because it's just a bunch of kicks and stuff. Mm hmm in the town or like the parmesan capital mm -hmm. the princess is beating up a guard or two the, the king, the king i guess traitors. the king i guess figured it out at this point because yeah. they attack he the finally princess finally believes him yeah. i think it's because they attack the princess probably and he takes out yeah a knight a ninja or two he calls them traitors like you said he takes out some guards waiting outside and then tells the people to seize them yes. they're traitors and, and again they immediately do and yeah. he goes they're there's a mirror. There's a mirror. Yeah, Zamir's men. a traitor. They're not mine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The people again take out the rest of the ninjas. Yeah, because the people love him. So they're like, yeah, I'll do everything you tell me to. Yeah. I guess because there's always like a kid like waiting for, waiting for like a, a winner of the games to come back. Or because like I, I have a feeling what happens is if somebody wins the game, 
they like ride through town triumphantly. Right. Otherwise, if they're all dead, Zamir and the ninjas come back come through town. and are like, they're gone. No right. winner. And either way, there's going to be a party. Yeah. So like, cool. The game's Today we're going to have a wedding or a hanging. <laughs> either way, we're going to have a lot of fun, huh? But they say like, you know, someone's coming, someone's coming. So they all kind of look out and see and they see, they think they see the American coming and he rides up on a horse in the back alley. So, okay, so, right. so John won, but then behind him is his dad on another horse. With He's it, like pulling him along, and the arrow is still in the dad. Which again, I mean, maybe he's just like, hopefully, somebody can help him. So does that mean the dad won too? Oh, <gasps> the dad finally won because he. They both. Do you won have the to game. do it within a timeline, or does it matter? Like I don't know. There's no real rules for this game because technically, Rachel, he was still in the game because the ending. Let's do the ending, and then I'll tell you what they could have done. Okay. Okay. I wish yeah, we would have. This, this is the end. I wish by we would have filmed ourselves watching this ending. This was. Amazing. I did not know this is how it I ends. I should have recorded. So spoil, this. super spoiler alert for this last little bit. The princess comes up. She to, runs. She to runs him. to him. And the king is like celebrating, like yay, yay, and yes. and all the people are celebrating. She gets on the horse with them. Right. They like look at each other lovingly, and then they kiss. And as they kiss, the two of them, it just goes from a shot of the king looking on for a second. Yes. And then it goes to a shot of the princess and Kurt on the horse, freeze frames. Freeze frames. It just freeze frames, and then text comes up as yes. though this was based on a true story. And oh it says, my god, this is a very based on a true story way of ending. In this. 1985, the first early warning Earth station was placed in Parmistan for the U.S. Star Wars defense program. That's what it's on. It's poorly spaced out. Oh, absolutely. There are <laughs> every word is capitalized. Every word is cap like it's a title. That's the full title there. And that's the end. And it then goes to credits. It goes to credits and it goes to like, it goes to like, here's a quick video and then freeze frame and then a video freeze frame of him doing his like Jim Cotta. What the fuck? <laughs> now I get it. And it says based on the novel, the terrible game in the credits and yeah, it freeze frames. Yeah, freeze frames on him doing the, the, doing different the Jim high, yeah, 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 yeah. high bar. We get, and we get some more moves in the credits. So, yes, I do think for a movie like this, you want to get out of there. <laughs> you don't want any, you don't want to be we, hanging we can't, around. There's nothing to sum up. We're done. He won the game. But technically, you could have been like, you didn't even have to go to a new scene. No. You could have had the king come up and be like, my friends, you've won the game. Both of you have won the game. Yes. You can ask for anything in the world. You both get a favor. And they look at each other and the dad goes, sir, I, we'd like you to be... Part of the American defense system. Yes. Done. Because he just finished his mission. Now, John, you've saved my kingdom from from this terrible coup. What can I do in return? I want to marry your daughter. That's right. That's yes. fucking right. That's the way, That's the way you it. end it. Yes. You don't even have to have the wedding or anything. It's just, and it's them kissing and all the Parma standing and everybody's going, like, yay. Because yay, they don't care. They're happy with anything. Yeah. They just love to celebrate. They just love stuff. That's how this <laughs> should have ended. That would have been great. It would have been really corny, but also good. Well, with a movie like, it's like fucking this. Jim Cotta. Yeah, you're right. But then, like, his dad got to finish his mission, he won the game, and he got to get the girl. And he gets the princess. Technically, yep. we don't know if he got the princess. We have no idea, because according to their traditions, he's not supposed to. <laughs> right. But now that the Americans helped, and they, they put might the Star Wars in, maybe they'll modernize. You know, they'll yeah. change the culture it's a actually a, it's a lot. Grow. It's actually a lot of commentary about American imperialism and Soviet imperialism during the Cold War, it, and it the race to get into these different little right. nations and put them take on over. our side and take over and do coups to put the people in charge of that we wanted as Americans or Soviets. Oh, I bet that's what they were going for. Definitely a lot of commentary 100%. in that. Yeah, Folks yeah. at home, if you want to write that essay for your doc doctoral on U.S. politics in the 80s and write it about Jim Cotta, please cite Shelf Life. Oh, yeah, and let absolutely. let us know that you did that. Have fun citing Shelf Life. Absol absolutely. And then your professor can be like, the fuck? And then you're like, no, you really should listen to it. It's great. <laughs> that is the end of Jim Cotta. That is Jim Cotta. We did it. We got through it. I don't know how we did it but or why we did it, but, but we, we did, did it. Because this is shelf life, god damn it. 
And we do everything. We do here. everything. This is proof. At some point, at one point or another. Let me explain how this came to be, by the way, folks. Because when we were booking, we were booking the show, you know, for we those... We have a that, list. We have a list. We do have, we have a very extensive list. We were booking the show. Uh, we were coming up with what we wanted. And Rachel, I can't remember if you came up with it or I came up with it. I think, I think I you said, I want to do a B-movie. I wanted to do something different. Yeah. So we went to the B-movie list and we were running like the sub part of the list of the B movies. And I was like, well, she got Jim Cotta. And she was like, what's that one? I explained the plot based on what I knew from Red Letter Media or yes. We Hate Movies or whatever. And she was like, oh. Well, then we're we, doing that we one. gotta do that. We that sounds great. That's to perfect. Do that. I don't know why I thought it was perfect, but I thought it was perfect. So that's why here in volume three, you're getting Jim Cotta before a Marvel movie, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> that's right because by god we do what we want to do here at shelf life and then you guys can enjoy it that's right and you better have fucking enjoyed it because we enjoyed every minute of it we have come to that time of the show rachel i will give it to you first oh i'm so glad does jim Cotta have shelf life for me personally for me personally jim Cotta. Does not help show. Oh. I know. I know. You guys all expected me to say yes. Best movie. 10 out of 10. It was It was too long. It dragged at so many points. There yeah. were some. A lot of these movies key, drag. Funny points, you know, that I thought were funny. And, yeah. and it laughed and enjoyed. But it just stretched too much. Mm -hmm. It stretched way too much. I liked the concept, but stretched too much. Poorly executed. No way of me like understanding what the hell was going on without just inferring everything and asking too many questions during the movie. Yeah. So for me, no shelf life. The action sequences didn't do it for you to. They were to fine. Pull it over. I mean, he was he was doing his own stunts. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never gonna say to put a bad movie like this on the shelf. That's embarrassing. Sure. Well, there's some that I might. <laughs> no, well, and there, well, you could have a bad movie shelf, I suppose. Ooh, the bad movie shelf. Yeah, yeah. So you could have a bad movie shelf, but for me, I'm thinking between the box, like having it in the box. Yeah. Or not having it on the shelf. Right. Here's what I'll say. If you if you haven't seen Jim Cotta, get together with some friends, get some pizza, yeah. make some popcorn, watch it. Enjoy it, riff over it. Yeah. You will enjoy the action, action sequences and stuff like that. Yes. But I agree. There's too much downtime. Mm -hmm. And the exposition is a little too weird. I wouldn't be like, let's watch it again. That's where I'm stopping. That's where I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to watch it again. I saw I, it. There are B-movies out there that I think we will we will say, watch it again. It's oh, funny yeah. every time. Or it's, right. it's fun every time. Or you'll see something silly again. Yeah. You'll find something different. Yeah. This was just kind of uh, okay. And, and clearly, the, there's real movies that people say that are bad that w we will put on the shelf because we like them. Oh, yeah. Um, that's also true. But I think I'm with you. I don't think this has shelf life. I don't think it does. I think it has inf inf infamy right. because of the cult following. I get why there's a cult following. Because the gymnastics and like and the it's just kind of silly weirdness. It's got, it's got the comedy. The crazy town thing. Yes. Like, there's enough of it. But I think this is like a watch it once, have fun with, with your it. your friends. Yeah. And then you're probably done. Right. I don't think it needs to be in the box. Nah. What, if it's if it's it's available in some shape, way, shape, or form, yeah, there you go. Watch it. But you don't need to keep it. Let me t ask you this, Rachel. Walmart has it in a bin on DVD, like in literally in the Walmart bin. Oh, my God. Their box. You going to buy it? No. No? I don't think I would. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's as the, a that's joke, the... honestly, as a joke, I probably would, and right. then I would have myself a bad shelf. Sure. Because I think that sounds like a really like if funny you, idea. If you set up a bad shelf, you'd go get all oh, of the Oh, I would get all like the bad movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd have to. Yeah. Then I would have to have Jim Cotta. Right, yeah. In that case, Jim Cotta would have to be on there. But just Absolutely. like as like a fun, bad movie to have, yes. not enough for you. But it's just, it's not, because I don't think I would ever put it in the, the mm -hmm. player. Yeah. That's the only problem. Yeah. I don't disagree. I I contemplated whether it should be in the box just to be able to like show those like to share it with There your are friends. sequences where you you will laugh hysterically. Oh yeah. But they're too few and far between. 
it takes too long to get to each one yeah the the slow motion sequence the chase scene is like it's like here's what i'll say i want to go back and edit it because i feel like it would be an hour long movie yeah and it would be fine if you and i would put it on the shelf out, uh, like the i would buy it from the bin i should say i'd yeah. buy it from the bin but because it's all there yeah they didn't take out any of it i can't if you took out that chase scene when they're in morocco or wherever the hell they are yes cut it down then maybe you would the pacing would be better because there's no point to that it goes on too long yes and it's just constantly them like running around a corner and then looking back and yeah. then running around a corner and then looking back and yeah. then something happens and, and there's a gunfight and then there's a car and then they run around a corner and look back <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> I think our improvements on this could be made. I, if somebody out there wants to argue, put it in the box. Yeah, I won't let disagree. Us know. Do you put it in the box? Is it on your shelf? Like we said, we can definitely backtrack on this, and one day we'll be like, yeah, we still we bought it. Like, it's like yeah, it's I on, actually do have it. Yeah, now. it's in the box or whatever, because it is like infamous. But really, it's it's fun. It's just not fun enough for me to, to no. say it has shelf life. Yeah. I mean, for the fact that I don't even think there's anything to quote from it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we we like our B movies to have stuff where we can quote it, quote and it, like, come back to make it, a joke remember it. And like... the only thing I have for from this is Mystery Science Theater using it whenever anybody would make a kick. Yeah, just saying, just the going Jim Cutter. Right. So like they, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like it is infamous because Mystery Science the it's like Mystery Science Theater infamous. So yeah. I have more fun watching, like, Final Sacrifice. Oh, my God. The Final Sacrifice is definitely one that I would have on my shelf. Yeah. So that was Jim Cutta from 1985, directed by Robert Klaus, starring the incomparable gold medal winning Kurt Thomas. May he rest in peace. Cross it off the list. It is not on the shelf. I have been Kevin. And I'm Rachel. And this has been, I don't know why I did it like we were doing our fantasy draft. And this was Shelf Life. We will continue with Volume 3 in our next episode. We'll see you next time.